Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has a hollow beast harem and bleach. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by PAIN17 Ification and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Their first meetings. The blonde teen gazed at the rundown building that had belonged to his ancestors when they had allied with a hidden leaf. It carried an artifact of great power, one that was meant to be guarded for as long as time stood. It was both fortunate and unfortunate that this place had fallen so far under everyone's radar that it was unheard of for many years. If he had to guess, maybe a handful of people knew about this location besides himself, most of those people being dead anyway. Not that death could truly stop someone. He knew that firsthand the moment he discovered this place as a boy. Back again, child. A gentle voice spoke, prompting him to turn his blue eyes over to the speaker. She was a woman of noble beauty and grace that had red hair styled into twin buns atop her head. Her eyes were pupilless and shaded a dark violet, and her kimono looked to be of the finest quality. Acting as earrings were a pair of ceiling tags, while the insignia of the Uzumaki clan rested on the back and heart of her clothes. Finishing off her look was her form being visibly transparent and a thick chain that tethered her form to that of the rundown building. This was Mito Uzumaki, a deceased member of the Uzumaki clan, whose spirit had refused to leave the mortal plane out of an impeccable sense of duty to her people. She once held the greatest of the biju within her, the Kaiubi. She was the first to act as the beast's prison, while the young man before her was currently the third. A soft smile graced the blonde's face at her question. He never understood how he was able to see those who had died, but he didn't question it. In his eyes, speaking with a dearly departed helped stave off the bitter loneliness he suffered for most of his life. Mito being a member of his family only further pushed back those lonely thoughts. I just wanted to say goodbye before I left with Pervy Sage on our training trip. I don't know how long we'll be gone, so. Mito gave him a warm smile as he trailed off, already used to seeing him act this way around her. It saddened her just how much hatred had taken a role in her younger clansman's life, especially when she knew that love was the key to holding back the influence of the beast he carried, she knew this better than anyone. I see. Well, be sure to continue your Fkinjutsu studies, dear child. I would hate for you to come back without something new to present to me, especially when you've been such a wonderful student over the years. He robbed the back of his head bashfully, his closed eyes missing her brow's furrow briefly. I promise, he replied. When he opened his eyes again, he gave her a sad smile and moved in to embrace her, catching her slightly by surprise, since he had never done that before. What was more surprising was how she could actually feel him, and she could tell that the experience went both ways. I'm gonna miss you, Tabeo. She chuckled softly as she returned his embrace. Kishina-chan will throw a fit if she ever finds out you inherited her little tick. I'm just glad that I have another thing to remind me of her, he mused, stepping away from the hug while a hand rested on the scarf neatly wrapped over his shoulders. Hanohimaru had found it for Naruto after Tsunade had given the boy his grandfather's belongings he had left in the Hokage office prior to his death. Along with said scarf was an envelope addressed to the blonde, which held a photo of two people, his parents. It was such an emotional blow that he had stayed with Mido's spirit for a week before he returned to the village, no one knowing where he was due to the ignorance of the Uzumaki Mask Shrine. Mido was an emotional pillar for him, as well as a mentor who guided him through the methods of the infamous Uzumaki Fkinjutsu. Before he grew close to Tsunade who Mido revealed to him was her granddaughter Mido had begun to fill the void that had been placed in his heart the day he realized he had no parents. She did a fine job with that, Mido praised, fixing the loose knot that Naruto had tied to keep the scarf in place. Be sure to take good care of it, Naruto. I will. He gave the spirit one last embrace before he headed back to the village to meet Jiraiya at the gates. I'll be back stronger than ever, Mito Bachan. Count on it. When he was no longer in sight, she whispered aloud, I know you will, child. I suppose that you might consider this another form of bestial act, a very tall and light-skinned man asked as he held up an unconscious and bleeding woman by the front of her clothes. Maybe it is, Neliel, he continued, but at least it finally took care of you and your annoying ideals. A bit away from him was a pink-haired man with amber eyes, messing with a small device in his hands. Are you finished, Noitra-san? The woman is defeated, and your posturing is bordering on foolish. The eighth espada of Waco Mundo sneered at the scientific rancor. I'd watch your tone, say Aliporo, considering how you're not even being suggested for an espada seat. Just finish setting up that damn thing and let's get this over with. His sneer was aimed at the unconscious woman once more. I'm already sick of looking at this trash. Sayalaporo sniffed dismissively as he finished the final touches on his device. It's ready, he announced, gathering some of his riatsu and pouring it into the device. Lazily, he tossed it in front of himself and observed as a garganta was formed, though this one didn't look even half as stable as a standard one. 
Hurry and toss her through, the scientist sniped, clipping a bracelet around Neil's left wrist. That should allow me to record what happens with this experimental garganta. I must know if we're only connected to the land of the living and the Cirite. Don't presume to order me around, Noitra snarled out as he dropped Neliel carelessly onto the ground before brutally kicking her in her stomach and through the garganta. Right as she was passing through, a flash of pink light blinded the tour anchor for a moment. When it cleared, they saw a young child that resembled Neliel get swallowed by the garganta before the whole thing collapsed on itself. The moment made Noitra smile maliciously as he turned away and started heading back to Las Notches followed by Sayalaporo. Unknown to them, Neliel's Fratchian had crawled back to where their leader had been defeated. All they saw was a splash of blood that they knew belonged to her and some strands of her beautiful turquoise hair. What now, Pesh? The larger of the two asked. Neliel Sama is gone, don't you know? Pesh grit his teeth and clenched his fists in shame for not being able to protect their leader from harm and possible death. Noitra and Sayalaporo he ground out, his self-shame feeding his growing rage. We'll be back to avenge Neliel Sama's cruel defeat at your hands. I swear it. Getting to his feet with a hiss of agony, he turned away from the sight of Neliel's blood and stated, let's go, Don Dechaka. We need to make ourselves scarce in case one of them comes back. The larger one gave a sad sigh at his friend's words, reaching down to gingerly grab the strands of hair before he too stood up painfully. He took a moment to weave the strands into two small rings before handing one to Pesh. The two put them on their dominant hands before they staggered away from Las Notches towards the seemingly endless desert that was Waco Mundo. They would use the following years to become stronger than ever before, all in the name of avenging their closest friend and leader. Stupid pervert, grumbled a 16-year-old Naruto as he looked over a sealing formula he had been designing for the past two weeks. I told him I wasn't ready for that much of the fox's chakra. He was in the last quarter of the second year of his training trip, a month past his birthday. So far, the trip itself had been very underwhelming for the blonde Yuzumaki, who was expecting to learn most of the tricks and skills that the Toad Sage was capable of using. That wasn't the case. Instead, the first year was devoted solely to mastering basics that should have been gone over by Kakashi, his official teacher since he had been assigned to Team 7. His Tujutsu had been smoothed out so that he didn't fight like some common brawler, his chakra control exercises had increased in difficulty, and he had finally learned how to dispel Jinjutsu. It bothered him that it took an entire year to fix those concerns when Kakashi should have noticed them much sooner. No doubt he helped Sasuke figure out his own issues while he was teaching the Achiha that damnable Chidori. He was going to hold on to that grudge for a while, considering how he had suffered being run through by that jutsu twice during his fight with Sasuke. The second year had Naruto practice with his Rasengan while also trying to develop one that was larger, thereby giving it more power. While he had improved greatly in his chakra control, he couldn't make the larger Rasengan without the assistance of a clone. Thankfully, though, he was finally able to use a standard Rasengan one-handed. It was halfway through the second year that Jiraiya decided to start the real training. To Naruto's dismay, the Toad Sage felt that the best training Naruto could do was practice using the Kaiubi Chakra, which he honestly hated to use. Sure, the power boost was phenomenal, but the aftermath of the chakra was not a fair trade in his eyes. His body was left weak, and his chakra coils would practically rage with pain due to the corrosive chakra being pumped through them. Being the Jinch Kriki of the chakra helped, but only by so much. And then, around one week ago, Jiraiya had the brilliant idea of loosening the seal so that more of that twisted chakra could be accessed. The result was Naruto quickly losing control and shifting into a four-tailed state, going into a berserker rage that could have wrecked the town just a couple miles away from their position. Luckily, Jiraiya had some suppression seals on hand, something Naruto immediately started working on as soon as he recovered from the strain of the Biju Chakra. He had just finished making a successful one the other day, which allowed him to resume his theoretical seal. Currently, he was seated atop the hotel building he and Jiraiya were staying at, waiting for the pervert to return from his daily session of spying on women. If there was one thing Naruto was most disappointed about concerning this trip, it was how the Toad Sage focused more on his research than actually training his so-called apprentice. He sighed, feeling depressed about the lack of real value this trip had. He was hoping to show Mido how much he had grown over the years, but the time away from the hidden leaf was being wasted in his eyes. Everything he had done barring the use of the Kaiubi's chakra could have easily been done within the village walls. What's she going to think when I come back barely any stronger? He mused sadly, afraid of disappointing his earliest mentor figure. He was broken from his thoughts when he felt a strange pressure bearing down over his form. Frowning, he pocketed his notes and stood up, looking around for the source. The sound of something being forcibly stretched had him turn his gaze upward, and his eyes widened when he saw the space within the evening sky gain a crack before stretching open like a cavernous entrance. The surprises didn't stop there, for he saw a bundle fall through the opening and start plummeting towards the ground about a mile off from the small town. 
Officially worried, Naruto pumped as much chakra as possible into his legs and raced off in the direction of the descending bundle. He kicked off trees as soon as he was around them, using them to propel him forward while never losing sight of the bundle. As he drew closer, he saw long turquoise strands flailing behind the bundle like a makeshift tail. His eyes narrowed, and he unconsciously added some of the fox's chakra to his legs as he kicked off another tree. This time, the kickoff sent him hurtling towards the bundle, and he caught it before flipping to his feet and landing safely back on the ground. Looking back up, he saw the strange spatial opening close, and the sky returned to normal. He frowned at it for a few more moments before he looked down at the bundle in his arms. Carefully adjusting his grip, he pulled back the cloth and gasped softly at the sight of a small child with a terrible head wound that cracked the bone-looking mask on her head and left a nasty gash on her forehead. To his relief, the blood had dried and wasn't flowing, which meant that she should be safe from bleeding out. However, she could still have other major issues with a wound like that. He adjusted his grip on her again so that he wouldn't jostle her too much and then rushed off back to the town. With luck, he'd be able to find a healer for the injured child. She just fell through some rip in the sky. The nurse repeated as she looked over the unconscious child. To make the procedure easier, she had cut the child's hair short so that its length wouldn't get in the way. Yeah. I was just on a hotel roof when I felt this odd energy spike and then I saw a rip form in the sky, Naruto explained once more. Is she going to be alright? The nurse hummed in concern as she cleaned up the blood and closed off the wound on the girl's head. What was odd to her was that the child's mask wouldn't come off, almost as if it were attached to the girl. She hasn't lost too much blood and I'm having some tested so we can replenish whatever she has lost. This head wound, though, is particularly concerning. Was it deep? Naruto asked with a cringe. It was deep enough for me to note that this girl could suffer some serious mental damage, the most likely case being lost memories. What's also concerning is how this mask, she gestured to the cartoonish looking piece, is attached to her. I can't remove it unless I would wish to hurt her more, and I wouldn't. You think it could be linked to some undiscovered bloodline? Possibly. We can test her blood against other bloodlines that we have on file. Thankfully the medical centers in the land of fire stay up to date with one another, the nurse noted with a faint smile. So it happens now. Now? We let her rest and have her on fluids. If you wish, you could stay with her until she wakes that is, assuming she will wake up. As I said, her head wound was very concerning. Nodding in understanding, Naruto formed a clone to inform Jiraiya of his whereabouts before he grabbed a chair and took a seat next to the girl's bed. He looked to her unconscious face and frowned sadly at something like this happening to a child. Hang in there, he whispered, gently grasping her smaller hand. You'll pull through. Her head was swimming with muddled voices and blurry images that she couldn't connect. Her eyes clenched a few times before cracking open, revealing wide hazel orbs to the world. They blinked to regain their focus before she frowned in confusion. Where is Nell? She asked hoarsely before coughing. The coughing stirred Naruto from his sleep and he blinked in surprise at seeing the little girl awake after only a few hours. He pushed down his surprise in favor of grabbing a paper cup and filling it with water for the girl. Moving over to her, he used one hand to gently pat her back while the other offered her the cup. Here, drink this. She didn't notice who handed her the cup. All she knew was that there was water in it and that she was very thirsty. Taking it, she took a greedy drink to rinse her throat before coughing again, this time from drinking too fast. Easy now, Naruto gently urged, taking the cup to refill it. When he returned to her side, he helped her take sips of the water so that she wouldn't choke again. After the cup was emptied again, he set it aside and asked, are you alright? Breathing better, the girl turned to the blonde and met his blue eyes with her hazel ones. With a bright smile, she answered, yes. Nell is fine. Nell was just really thirsty. How at least she hasn't forgotten her name he mused internally. He noticed Nell look around in confusion before asking, where is Nell, anyway? You're in a medical ward. You had a really big cut on your head and you fell from the sky. Are really? Nell asked in surprise. But, Nell doesn't remember getting hurt or falling at all. He gently placed a hand on one of her shoulders to keep her in place. Easy. You don't want to accidentally reopen your cut. Trust me, that hurts. She looked to him and saw that he was smiling down at her. This helped her slowly relax, though her anxiety was still there. Do you know what happened to Nell? He shook his head sadly. No, I don't. I caught you before you hit the ground and brought you here, but I didn't see anything that hurt you. Oh, their bracelet is next to you, by the way. She blinked before looked to the small stand, spotting the white bracelet in question. Her brows furrowed faintly, and she replied, Nell doesn't remember seeing that before. You were wearing it when I caught you, Naruto explained. She frowned at nothing before looking to him. Nell doesn't know what that bracelet did. Nell has never seen it before. The sureness in her voice made Naruto nod at her in response. Okay then. I'll just toss it for you, alright. At her nod, he grabbed the item and moved over to the waste bin. 
Just as he was about to toss it, he felt a twitch in his grip and a blurry image flashed in his mind. He couldn't clearly make out what it was, save for it being a silhouette of something or someone. Blinking back into focus, he looked at the bracelet resting on his palm with a frown. Something told him that the bracelet was more than it seemed, something darker. His frown deepened before he used chakra to grip and crush the bracelet, dropping the broken pieces into the trash bin. Turning to Nell, he made sure to give her a smile as he declared, there we go. In the trash. She smiled back as he sat beside her once again. So oh, are you? I'm Naruto Uzumaki of the Hidden Leaf. Naruto? She asked, shortening his name. He chuckled at that and simply nodded. You can call me that if you want, Nell-chan. Her smile returned just as the nurse came in, and Naruto fraught a snicker at how shocked she looked at the girl being awake and alert. With any luck, he'd be able to get her out of the medical ward by morning. Sayelaporo frowned when he noticed that the tracer he had placed on Neelil vanished from the screen, had kept on for the past century. I was wondering how long this would last, he mused as he started to work with the screen and study the results of the tracer. From what he could read from the data, the experimental garganta he had Noitra kick Neelil into had a greater exposure to spacetime displacement. This meant that time acted differently inside of it compared to the outside worlds. What that also meant was that Neelil could be in a world where only a minimal amount of time had passed compared to the century Waco Mundo just went through. Making sure to gather everything he could on his findings, the current Eighth Espada left his personal area of Las Notches in search of Azen. The man would no doubt be very interested in what had happened. What makes you think I'll let you drag a kid along with us during this trip? Jiraiya asked Naruto after he returned to the hotel room with Nell. The little girl was wearing the green covering she had been found in, but it was reformed into a gown with a hood that covered her entire body, save for her bare feet. She was currently standing beside the blonde while holding onto his left hand with her right, her hazel eyes looking around the hotel room and the tall man in front of her and Ruto. I couldn't just leave her there, pervy sage, Naruto argued. Besides, I was the one who found her, so I'm choosing to be responsible for her. You really think you can handle that kind of responsibility? The man challenged. Probably better than you, Naruto fired back with a slight frown. Anyway, I'm not going to back down on this. If you really are so against me bringing Nell along, then I'll take her back to the Hidden Leaf by myself. The Toad Sage groaned as he palmed his forehead. By the Sage, kid you're really going to give me some early wrinkles. And the ladies hate wrinkles. Rolling his eyes, Naruto took that complaint as him winning the argument and walked with Nell over to his bed. You should probably get some more sleep, Nell-chan. I'll grab you something to eat for when you wake up. But Nell isn't tired, she replied with a pout before she failed to stifle a yawn. Naruto chuckled at her embarrassed blush. I think you are. Just lie down and get some sleep, okay? I'll be here when you wake up. You promise? He heard her ask tiredly, already starting to succumb to sleep. He gave her another smile, this one truer than any he had showed his fellow ninja back home. Yeah, I promise he waited for her to fully fall asleep before he gently patted the cracked part of her mask. Sleep tight, Nell-chan. Gureya silently watched the exchange and was surprised at how calmly Naruto had handled it. He also noted how Naruto seemed less tense and more relaxed around the green-covered brat. Humming softly in thought, he watched Naruto grab his toad wallet and create a clone before leaving the hotel room. The clone then decided to lie on the bed beside Nell, and she almost immediately turned towards him, more than likely for his natural warmth. The toad sage couldn't fight the small smile that formed. If he didn't know any better, he probably would have assumed that the two were siblings, if not a father and child. Deciding to let it be, he left the hotel room to write a letter. No doubt Tsunade would want to hear about this. When the real Naruto returned, he noted that Nell was still sleeping, while his clone was also snoozing. Rolling his eyes in amusement, he put away the food he bought before he swapped places with and dispelled his clone. He smiled at Nell snuggling against him and patted her mask again, this time letting his hand rest on the crack. To his surprise, he felt his hand stick to the mask, while a strangely fluid energy flowed from his chest and down his arm, leaking out from his hand and into the crack in Nell's mask. The eye holes of the mask then flashed a brilliant pink before the room was engulfed in pink smoke. When it cleared, Naruto was left in speechless awe at the sight of a full-grown woman who looked so much like the little girl he saved. And Nell. He asked tentatively. The green gown had stretched and ripped, thankfully in a manner that covered her modesty, while her once short hair regained its original length and fullness. Her mask had also changed to a more goat-like appearance that greatly contrasted its once cartoonish look. She still had a scar in the crack in the mask, but a sheathed sword was now seen in her left hand, while her right rested against her head. Noticing that she was about to fall from the bed, Naruto quickly grabbed her shoulder to steady her. This got her attention and she opened her eyes to meet his own, allowing him to see familiar hazel eyes. Nellis that you? She regarded him silently for a few moments, searching with her eyes and looking over his form. Yara the human that saved me she murmured. Naruto Uzumaki, right. 
He couldn't help but give an awkward chuckle. You were calling me Rito earlier, but yeah, I'm Naruto. She took a moment to look around the room before a flash of realization appeared in her eyes. I was ambushed. Baited into a fight by Noitra after he her eyes widened in shock before turning back to Naruto. Was there anyone else with me? Two other hollows like myself, but with their masks torn off. She was in a panic state, he could obviously see it. I didn't see anyone else come out of that rip in the sky, no just you he saw her lean back, looking both horrified and devastated. I am sorry, Esh donned a chak as she whimpered as tears started to form in her eyes, memories of her defeat mixing in with the good times she had with her fratchian. They were hurt and I couldn't save them I I couldn't. Hearing enough, Naruto grabbed her shoulder once again and pulled her into a comforting embrace. At first, she tensed and broke away, but he regripped both of her shoulders and had her look him in the eyes. Her teary gaze met his understanding one, and she stopped resisting before leaning into him and letting out a distraught wail of grief. As she wept, Naruto held her close to him, acting as her emotional pillar like Mito had done for most of his life. I'm so sorry he kept repeating in a whisper, hoping to comfort her more than he was currently able to. He didn't know how long he held her, but she was the first to move away, gently pushing back from him as she wiped the lingering tears. Thank you she whispered softly, almost unheard by him. Any time he replied, sitting across from her on the hotel bed. So you are Nell, right? I suppose that's what my younger self was going by, she mused, grateful for Naruto's presence and his aid given to her childlike form. My real name is Nelial Tuadurshvink, and I am I mean I was the third espada of Waco Mundo. Waco Mundo? Naruto repeated. It's also known as the Hollow World. It's where Hollows, like myself, reside. I'm a higher class of Hollow, since I'm much more human-like in appearance save for my mask. Is this something to do with spirits? Naruto asked. She nodded, slightly impressed with his deduction. Yes. But how did you? She stopped before her senses picked up the faint feeling of Riatsu coming from his abdomen area. You're spiritually aware, she concluded. Interesting. Yeah, I've been able to see and talk to spirits for as long as I could remember. But, no one else has been able to from what I've noticed, even when a spirit is right next to them. He then realized something and asked, wait if you're a spirit, how come Pervy Sage and that nurse were able to see you? She frowned at the question, thinking over what had happened after her defeat. After I was ambushed and beaten, I was sent through an experimental garganta created by Sayalapura Grands. My guess is that, since I reverted into a child form beforehand, the garganta had an effect on my spiritual composition and made me closer to a human. I'm a bit lost, Naruto admitted. She smiled at his confession, once again thankful for his presence. It was helping her cope with everything that happened. To keep it simple, I'm in a physical form that can interact with everyone, whether they can see spiritual beings or not. Oh, that's easier to understand, he replied, bringing a fist into his palm. Her smile remained before she felt a small spike of pain from her mask. It looks like I'm limited on time before I revert back into my younger state. My Riatsu is still too unstable to hold my true form for too long. She looked him in the eye and continued, I can see a great deal of compassion and understanding in you, Naruto Uzumaki. Please, take care of my younger self and keep trying to repair the crack in my mask. You have Riatsu, which is spiritual energy. You must learn how to call upon it to fix my mask. Her head lowered as her hands clenched the covers of the hotel bed. They trembled slightly before she took a breath to calm her raging emotions. Looking back to him, she finished, I hope to speak with you again soon. I find myself enjoying your company. He looked surprised at her statement before he smiled brightly at her. No worries, Nelial. I promise to do everything I can to help you, no matter what form you're in. And Naruto Uzumaki never backs down from a promise. Nelial found herself impressed once more by the human before her. He had heart, and that heart was a driving force in his life, something she could both appreciate and admire. Just as the eye holes of her mask flashed once more, Nelial gave him one last smile before another burst of pink smoke filled the room. Once it cleared, Nell was seen resting on the bed once again, her mask once more cartoonish looking, her hair once again short, and her sword missing. How must be related to her true form, Naruto mused before he helped Nell get more comfortable in the bed. Looking down at her sleeping form, his eyes burned in growing determination as he whispered, Riatsu spiritual energy, I have some serious training to do if I'm going to help you, Nell Chan he then smiled, closing his eyes and shaking his head with a chuckle. I always wind up in crazy situations, don't I? Looking down, he gently grabbed his scarf and imagined the faces of his parents, Mido, and then Nelial. I've got a lot of promises to keep no point in stopping now. I'll keep them all and make you guys proud, he declared softly. With his mind made up, he gathered his notebook on Kenjutsu and opened it up to a blank page. He had some more seals to draw out. Chapter 2. Enlightenment. You surprise me more often than I care to admit, boy, the Kaiubi spoke to Naruto during one of his thinking periods. 
it had been a week since the blonde Yuzumaki had found Nell and met her true form, Neliel. During that period, he had made good on his word about bringing the young-looking Aranker with him and Jiraiya and keeping an eye on her. She reminded him of how he used to act as a child, vibrant and naturally curious about the world around her. He hadn't made any breakthroughs on discovering his latent Riatsu that Neliel said he had, but that didn't stop him from going over many different theories concerning it using Fkenjutsu. Mito had told him that Fkenjutsu had limitless potential, and it the only time there were limits was when your creativity spontaneity dwindled. Thankfully, due to having a history designing pranks and thinking differently than others, Naruto had creativity in spades. He just needed to figure out how to apply it to his seals. How so Fox? Naruto replied, sitting across from the cage Bijuu within the seal. For starters, I'm surprised that you were able to see and interact with the lingering spirit of my first prison. That Yuzumaki woman was terrifying with her seals, and she proved it by sealing me within her without any help. Mito sensei thinks that my ability to see ghosts is linked to the seal my old man used on you. The dead demon consuming seal summons a Shinigami, right? An avatar of death, yes. Since death was a part of your sealing, Mito sensei thinks that I can see ghosts because I've been, in her words, touched by death. This means that I've been in contact or around an incredibly potent level of Riatsu. That spiritual energy the bone-headed woman mentioned, the Bijuu clarified. Ignoring the insult, Naruto continued, but, even though I have the potential to use Riatsu, I'm still no closer to figuring out how I can do so. I'd ask you for help, but I doubt you'd want anything to do with this. Considering how you squander my chakra, you're correct on your assumption, Brad. For the record, I don't want to use your power. Sensei told me stories of how strong she was without you, and I want to reach her level someday. Besides, neither of us ask for the connection we share, so, why not just accept what happened and go about our own business? I do my thing and you do yours. The Kaiubi snorted at that. My thing is only possible outside of the seal, and we both know you won't remove the damn thing. Well, isn't being sealed in me a better alternative than having Akatsuki take you? We still don't know why they want the Bijuu, but it can't be anything good, right? That we can agree on I have my own guess on what could happen if they manage to capture us all, but such a thought is too crazy to accept. Care to share? No. Figured as much, the Bijuu laid down on his side of the gate. Why not just try and split your chakra? What are you talking about? Naruto asked, raising a brow. Split your chakra, he repeated. It's a mix of physical and spiritual energies, right? Why not make a seal that splits or separates them? The blonde Yuzumaki blinked at the notion. Why didn't I think of that? You've been too distracted from being able to put your full focus on the issue. With looking after that broken child and training with that hermit, you can't go 100% on the subject at hand. Why help me, then? I'm bored. Living 16 plus years inside of you drags on with nothing of interest. The only breaks from this boredom I've had were the times you used my chakra, and even those times weren't all too exciting. Although, I will admit that using my form to pin down Shukaku was both amusing and flattering. Yeah, I'm all about parading your ego around, Naruto deadpanned, earning an amused smirk from the Kaiubi. Hearing you acting fearless around me can also be counted as interesting, to be honest. That hollow intrigues me, as well. She had this deathly presence about her, and it had a darker undertone to it. If I had to guess, hollows are the quote-unquote dark side of death. Sensei told me that the concepts of light and dark are all based on perspective. To the hidden leaf, people who are against them are dark while our allies are light. That woman really has made an impact on you, an acceptable one, I'd grudgingly admit. Good. I'd be worried if she didn't influence my life at least a little bit. Mito sensei was there for me when I needed someone to talk to, more so than old man Hokage could have been. Well, not everyone is a spirit tethered to a physical structure, after all. Fair point. Anyway, try devising a seal that separates your spiritual energy from your physical energy. If chakra is a blend of the two, then it should only make sense for you to access Riatsu by separating it from the equation. Sounds like a better idea than any of the other ones I've thought of. Thanks Fox. He turned to leave the area holding the seal, but paused before he took a step. You know I hope we can have more talks like this. It's refreshing talking to you when you're not all murderous and angry at me. With that, the Yuzumaki walked off before he faded out of the seal, leaving the Bijuu to contemplate on the young man's parting words. I've recreated the Garganta I experimented with before, Aizen Sama, Sayalapura stated as he stood before the flickering vacuum of space being generated in his lab. The traitorous Shinigami, once an esteemed captain of the 5th Division, had a casual smile on his face as he observed the unstable portal between worlds that hollows could make. He could already feel the spiritual energy leaking out in a twisted and misshapen manner, further displaying the instability of the experimental Garganta. Good. Are the hollows equipped with those tracers of yours? The man asked calmly. Yes sir. They're ready to be sent at any time, the 8th spotter applied. 
Saying nothing more, Aizen walked over to the Garganta, while holding up a glowing cube that had a spherical object within its core, the Mjaioku. The glowing item shined brighter while the Garganta reacted to its glow, shimmering and flickering dangerously around its edges before stabilizing. The black space within the Garganta also gained a faint violet shade, barely noticeable except at the right angles. Send two of them through, say Alaporo. And keep me informed on what happens to them, Aizen ordered as he secured the Mjaioku within his sleeve. He then turned and walked away, leaving the Espada with his orders. Sayalapura said nothing in reply to Aizen's order. Instead, he picked two random hollows and sent them through the Garganta before closing it and moving to his data screen. He was curious about what may occur himself, after all. It was three days since Naruto's talk with the Kaiubi, and he was currently walking through the small village that the trio had decided to stay in for the night. Nell, to her delight, was seated on his shoulders, thanks to Naruto agreeing to give her a piggyback ride. She was currently leaning against the back of his head while his hands held her legs securely on his shoulders. So, Nell-chan, what should we do first? You want to get something to eat, or do you want to see if any stalls have games? Naruto asked, playing the role of Nell's older sibling. It was something he found himself easily sliding into, considering how Konohamaru and his friends would constantly refer to him as their Nai-chan. It was endearing to him, especially since he had no siblings of his own, thanks to his parents sacrificing their lives for his own. Ames? Nell wants to play games with Ruto. The Aranker exclaimed excitedly. But the chuckle, Naruto nodded and declared dramatically, to the games, then. Let's go, to Bayo. Yeah? Nell cheered, throwing both hands into their air. Unnoticed by Naruto, Jiraiya was watching his godson's interactions with a little girl he rescued. In his opinion, he thought the girl would be a distraction to Naruto, but he was proven wrong during the previous training session when the boy got a few clean shots on him during their spar. What really got his attention, though, was how Naruto was starting to throw out different tactics in their spars. He was now using ceiling tags to impede the Toad Sage, tags that Jiraiya was sure he never showed the kid before. This brought up the question of where Naruto learned to make them and who taught him the basics. The Yuzumaki had never shown his lineage before until recently, and the display was staggering due to the lack of prior evidence. So, he had taken to observing his apprentice when the young man thought he was out peeping, whether it was personally, with a clone, or with a small scout toad. Naruto was obviously hiding something, and he wanted to know what it was or why he felt the need to hide it in the first place. He just hoped that Naruto would still be the knucklehead he had made his apprentice. Naruto frowned at the ceiling array he was working on, carefully taking his time with his brushstrokes so that the formula would be neat and precise. Mito had told him, almost religiously, that his calligraphy was the worst she had ever seen from an Uzumaki. He had sulked for hours the first time he heard it, reminding the woman of her late husband's eccentricities. Istanamoristric, Naruto breathed out as he finished the array and backed off. With a relieved sigh, he took a moment to observe the results of his efforts and smiled at everything looking in order. Good. Now, I just need to test it out. And what would you test it on? The Kaiubi butted in from within Naruto's mind. I'm tempted to plead that you not test it on yourself and potentially kill us both. I thought you were just chakra with a conscious. And what sort of energy do you think makes that consciousness? Chances are that I'll be just as affected by this seal of yours as you are. So, you'd better be damn sure that it's safe before using it on yourself, brat. Naruto frowned at that, thinking over his options before shrugging to himself and creating a shadow clone. You know what's going on, right? Yep. Gonna test it on me so that, if anything happens, I just dispel. Right. Nodding, Naruto faced his duplicate and held up the tag. Okay then spirit ejection seal. He declared as he slapped the tag on his clone and primed it with chakra. The symbols on the seal lit up a bright white before changing to a golden orange shade and spreading across the body of his clone. The clone didn't seem bothered by anything, looking expectant and slightly anxious, but not in any pain or discomfort. This was a good sign. After a few moments, Naruto frowned as he saw a spectral flicker come off his clone before it was forcibly dispelled. Hmm so, I'm guessing it works since clones need chakra to exist. If the seal really ejected the spiritual energy, then the clone obviously couldn't stick around. That sounds accurate enough, the Kaiubi agreed before his tone turned dry. I'm guess you're going to recklessly try it on yourself next, aren't you? Naruto only gave a sheepish chuckle at that as he started preparing a second tag. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I swear you'll be the end of me, groused the Biju. I'd stop you, the UT Naruto mentally drawled out. To his amusement, the fox actually sounded embarrassed as he admitted, I'm curious about what might happen, alright. Tuckling to himself, the blonde Uzumaki finished the tag and inspected it for a few minutes before declaring it safe. He sat on the chair the room provided and gave a small glance towards Nell's sleeping form. He smiled softly at the young Aranker before he silently placed the tag on his chest and primed it. 
Like with his clone, the tag started off with a white glow before it changed to golden orange. It spread across his body evenly, splitting down the middle as it spread to his face. After a few moments, he felt a shift in his chakra before a great force hit him like the freight train he outran while protecting Koyuki years ago. But the gasp, he felt himself get pushed back before his back hit the wall of the room, and he slid to the floor. Taking deep breaths, he observed the room and saw that nothing was disturbed, before his eyes turned to the chair he swore he was seated in. Getting to his feet, he heard a chain rattling and looked down to see one attached to his chest, just like the one Mito had. However, instead of seeing it attached to an object, he saw that it was attached to a body, his body. It was surreal to him, seeing his physical body slouched in the chair with a chain attached to its chest that was linked to the one attached to his. Curious, he gripped the chain links closest to his chest and gave a gentle tug. As soon as his wrist twitched to pull, he felt agonizing pain and immediately let go with a gasp, falling to his knees as he felt all his strength leave him in an instant. Son of A be careful, damn it. He heard the Kaiubi rage in his mind, the seal on his stomach glowing bright red on both his physical and spiritual bodies. That chain is obviously tethering your spirit to your body. What the hell do you think will happen if you yank it off, you damned imbecile? The question and consequences sank in, and he felt a shiver of dread climb up his spectral spine. All right, no messing with the chain. Got it. You better remember that, brat, growled the Bijuu before he took a breath. Now, let me tell you what I'm experiencing from my end. The representation of the seal changed as soon as your spiritual body was ejected from your physical one. What does it look like? An island, one that's surrounded by vast oceans and what looks to be a never-ending sunset. There are also smooth stone markers that I can only assume are graves. My guess is that they're linked to people you've lost that have had a major impact on you spiritually. Can you make out any names? He heard the fox growl thoughtfully, most likely while he took a look at the gravestones. It was still a bit concerning that he had graves within his own spiritual center. I can make out four names, brat. The first two belong to your damnable father and spitfire mother. Minato Namikaze and Kashina Yuzumaki. The last two belong to that duo you faced the first time you used my chakra, the Kai would be finished. Naruto stilled in surprise at that. Zabuza and Haku. Why would they? If I remember right, the fox cut in, you made some sort of pledge on the grave markers you made for them in Wave. Perhaps that was when that spiritual connection happened. Maybe I should really go visit their graves and see if they're still around. I'd love to talk with them again. Anyway, that's all I can see concerning the changes. I'm still tied to you, but the seal and gate changed to a collar with the sealing formula on it. Looks like I have slightly more freedom to move in your spiritual body. You're not going to try and overtake me or anything, will you? No. It wouldn't work anyway, I already tried. He would have face faulted if he wasn't more concerned with what to do next. Okay, so obviously the seal works since my spiritual self is out, then that must mean. He trailed off with eyes closed as he focused within himself, opening them again to the side of the Kaiubi seated on a solitary island that had a thin layer of grass above the sand save for the shore. On the shore itself were the grave markers that the Bijuu told him about, and the very center of the island had a single tree that had beautifully pure white blossoms on it. Not bad, he mused as he walked over to the gravestones, smiling softly at the names engraved on them and placing his hand on each one for a few seconds at a time to pay his respects. He then set his sights on the tree and headed for it, stepping around the Bijuu who was watching him with disinterest. Reaching the blossoming tree, he took note of a carving made on its bark, a carving that took the shape of his clan insignia. He fraught a chuckle at that and placed his palm against it, closing his eyes to focus, while his faint smile never faded. He felt an airy substance flowing through the veins of the tree, traveling upward from its roots and spreading out to the blossoms themselves. Removing his hand, he reached up and gently picked a blossom from one of the branches, holding it gently in his palm. He took note that, while the petals of the blossom were white, the core with the faintest orange that was only noticeable if you looked hard enough. A small island breeze picked up, carrying the blossom out of his hands and out to sea where it settled itself atop the calm waters. However, as soon as it rested, a ripple echoed across the waters, and the blossom gave off a brilliant glow as white as winter. Both Naruto and the Kaiubi looked on with interest as the blossom faded away into light particles that were carried on another island breeze, this time returning to the blonde Yuzumaki. He reached his arm out towards the light, letting the particles dance between his fingers before they moved to his scarf and clung to it. The scarf gave off the same white glow that the blossom once did, and Naruto felt a rush of energy flow through him, filling the void that once held his chakra but couldn't because of his spiritual form. The cores of his blue eyes gained a glowing white ring before his consciousness returned to his spiritual body. He held up his arms to look at his hands, staring at the palms for a few moments before closing his eyes and concentrating. Like when he would call upon chakra, he felt energy flow through his spiritual body, which began to flicker with white flames that originated from his scarf and abdomen. 
opening his eyes once more, they had the white rings within their blue depths, and Naruto smirked in triumph at the power he felt racing through him. So this is Riatsu, he mused before his spiritual body ignited in white fire and flowed back into his physical body. He stirred before opening his physical eyes and sitting up in the chair, holding up his right arm with the palm facing upward. Feeling for the Riatsu within him, he was pleased that he could differentiate it from the chakra he was born with, comparing its feel to that of oil, Riatsu, and water, chakra. A small flicker of white fire ignited in his palm, the flames no bigger than a thumbnail, but still, it was progress. He smirked as he finished his earlier musing, I like it. The following morning, Naruto opted to sleep in for once, feeling that he earned it after his success the night before. He had moved to the bed with Nell, letting her curl against him and rest her head atop his chest as she slept. The two felt a measure of comfort around one another that they couldn't recall feeling for quite some time, Naruto because of the life he lived and Nell because of her unstable spiritual energy damaging her memories. This was the scene Jiraiya opened the hotel room door to, and he felt torn about letting his godson sleep or waking him up to train him. He saw the relaxed state he was in as he slept, as if nothing in the outside world mattered to him now. He then turned to Nell and saw that she had a smile in her sleep, cuddled against a larger body beside her. Feeling sympathetic, the toad sage decided to leave the two to their sleep and quietly left the room. His apprentice needed moments to rest and forget about the troubles he would soon face. It was night once more in the land of fire, and one of the more successful gambling towns was alight with life as the night crowd enjoyed themselves. The people within the town were merry, feeling peace despite the practically never-ending cold war between their country and the others that housed hidden villages. However, these peaceful souls were unaware that the sky above started to twist and stretch before a spatial opening formed and let out two strange creatures with bone-like masks covering their heads. The first looked avian, with a falcon-styled mask and two pairs of wings, while the tail was whip-like with vicious barbs on the end. The second looked canine, standing on all fours with strong forelegs and lithe hindlegs. It had two tails, each with spaded tips that looked as sharp as its claws, while the mask on its face took on the stylings of a jackal. The jackal hollow sniffed the air before licking its bone-covered lips hungrily. Plenty of souls down there, he growled out, nearly yipping in excitement. The falcon hollow flapped its wings once to push its body forward, taking a more thorough look at the town below. More than we were getting before, that's for sure. He turned back to his fellow hollow, a gleam of excitement seen in his red eyes. What say we try a few samples? All right. Jiraiya declared with a bright grin aimed at his apprentice at Nell. Unknown to the man, it had been almost another week since Naruto discovered his Riatsu. This will be our last night staying in a town before we start trekking back to the Hidden Leaf. So, let's enjoy our last stay in civilization for a while. The a Naruto drawled out, knowing why the Toad Sage was so excited. Since this was a ritzier town than others, this meant more attractive inspirations for his perverted book series. Looking to his side, he saw Nell looking around in growing excitement at the lights and people around her, no doubt wanting to take part in any festivities. You want to go check out the games, Nell Chan. Or do you want to eat first? Nell want to eat first, she replied. Okay. Let's go see if there's a Raymond stand anywhere, he suggested. Yay. Raymond. She cheered, taking off down a random street and pulling a chuckling Naruto with her. But the other two gone, Jiraiya dropped his jovial act and quickly formed a shadow clone that took the image of a nondescript man. Keep an eye on them. We don't know what could happen. The clone nodded and followed after the younger duo, getting lost in the crowd of people. The Toad Sage frowned to himself when he was alone once again. Something's coming I don't know what, but I can feel it. He hoped he was just being paranoid, but that wasn't necessarily a bad thing for a spy master. The two hollows sat atop one of the buildings of the bustling town, watching the unaware souls below with hunger in their eyes. Oh, I can't decide who to go for first. Jackal bemoaned. Just pick some, already. Falcon snarked, his hunger making him angry. I said you can pick our samples, so hurry up and pick. I'm trying, but they all look so he cut himself short and sniffed the air for a few moments before he started salivating. You smell that. Two high-level spiritual energies close together, and they're here somewhere. You know my sense of smell is nowhere near yours. Just take the lead and I'll follow. You got it. I'll sniff them out in a heartbeat. Jackal promised before taking off in the direction of the delectable spiritual presence. Naruto, with Nell on his shoulders, grinned as he won the Aranker a stuffed animal at a ball toss booth. His grin grew faintly at her choosing a fox one, and he couldn't help laughing at the irony. At least she has good taste, snapped the Kaiubi, which only made Naruto snort in more laughter. So, what booth do you want to try next, Nell Chan? Nell wants to do that fishing one. Nell wants a. She and Naruto froze in place when they felt a faint pressure on their shoulders trying to weigh them down. Blue eyes narrowed before they darted around, looking for anything out of the ordinary. 
they flicked by two odd-looking animals to look down another crowded street before quickly darting back, taking note of the bone-like masks on their heads. Hollows? Naruto asked softly, earning Nell's attention. More people like Nell? She asked quietly. He shook his head and looked to see if anyone else noticed the hollow's presence. To both his relief and annoyance, nobody did. No, not people they look like a dog and some weird bird. Bonell responded, sounding sad, though she couldn't figure out why. Her head suddenly throbbed, and she held it as blurry images raced across her mind. Pestando. Naruto heard her mumbling and grew concerned. Nelchan. Do those two look familiar to you? He asked, making his way out of the crowded streets and towards the nearest exit of the town. She groaned at the throbbing in her head, but still took a moment to look at the hollows as they trailed after the duo. No. Nell hasn't seen them for. Nodding in understanding, Naruto called on his chakra to summon a shadow clone. He handed Nell off to the clone and ordered, take her somewhere safe and keep an eye on her. I'll try and bait away those two. Got it, boss, the clone replied and prepared to head in a different direction. Naruto Nell called out, still fighting her throbbing head. Naruto gave her a reassuring smile. Don't worry, Nell-chan. I'll be fine, I promise. Seeing his smile and promise brought an odd feeling of deja vu to her, but it also allowed her to trust Naruto's declaration. So, she gave him the best smile she could as the clone took her away. With one less thing to worry about, Naruto kept moving toward the exit of the town, passing through it and moving away from the town to a darkened field that was only lit by faint moonlight. He stopped moving at that point, turning around to face the approaching hollows. So what are two hollows doing here in the elemental nations? He questioned with narrowed eyes, letting his chakra flow through his body. How the hell does a human know about us if Sayalapura Sama said no hollows ever set foot in this place? Jackal asked. Palkin narrowed his eyes while his barbed tail twitched dangerously. I don't know, but this human knows too much as it is. We need to hurry and eat him before he spreads the word about our existence. Naruto's eyes narrowed further at that while Jackal licked his lips in anticipation. Sounds good to me. Let's get him. With a battle crying yowl, Jackal charged forward while Falcon flew up and moved to circle around. Naruto knew what the play was, and he was confident he could take them both on without much trouble. So, he met Jackal's charge while forming two clones behind him. W what? Jackal stammered out in surprise, never halting his charge. How can a human do that? You obviously never met a shinobi before, Naruto used as one of his clones formed a Rasengan in a couple of seconds, while the other grabbed the first's arm and launched him at Falcon. Allow me to enlighten you on what you're up against. Rasengan. In an instant, an orb of dangerously swirling chakra formed in Naruto's palm, and he had it spearhead his charge. Jackal gathered his Riatsu in retaliation, coating his claws in crimson energy that clashed with the Jutsu in a deadlock. How the hell is a human doing this? He cried out in frustration. Halkin dove in a flash, avoiding the airborne Rasengan before clashing his bladed beak against the kunai of the second clone. TCH. Damned human. This should have been easy. You wish. The clone fired back, pushing back Falcon and throwing a shuriken that was batted aside by the barbed tail. He then flipped through hand seals and took a deep breath before blowing out his soul wind style jutsu. Drilling air bullet. Seeing the rippling wind, Falcon swerved around the bullet while whipping his tail in Naruto's direction, firing off the barbs like a small volley of kunai. They were avoided by Naruto leaping over them, forming a shadow clone to act as a springboard that he used to shoot himself toward Falcon, clocking him in his mask with a chakra coated fist. Ah. The hollow cried, being flung back with tremendous force and sent sprawling on the ground. Bastard. Jackal growled out, still in a deadlock with the original. Tell me how you're fighting us hollows. It shouldn't be possible. Naruto smirked at that, pumping more chakra into the Rasengan and making it grow slowly, which allowed him to start pushing Jackal back. I told you already, I'm a shinobi, Tabeo. The Rasengan detonated at that, pushing back Jackal with its expulsion, while Naruto slid back a few feet with his sandals digging up twin trenches in the ground. Falcon saw this and knew that they were outmatched. He also knew that they were expendable. They were merely scouts meant to carry recorders so that Sayalaporo could report what they witnessed in this world. As such, it didn't matter if he made it out alive or not, the eight Despada would be getting the data regardless. Sayalaporo sama he spoke quietly to the device clipped around his neck, if you're able to hear this, be on the lookout for a blonde human with spiked hair and blue eyes, calling himself a shinobi. With his final message made, Falcon forced himself back up and gathered Riatsu in his wings before flapping them towards the Uzumaki, sending out sharpened blades of wind toward the blonde. He wasn't at all surprised when the shinobi dodged them, but he did try and use the attack to give him room to make a retreat. Dackle was too injured to make a run for it, plus his lack of aerial maneuverability made him an easier target. Naruto saw the avian hollow trying to make a break for it, and he knew that he couldn't use any jutsu to catch up to him in time. 
So, throwing a chakra enhanced kunai at Jackal's mask which cracked it dangerously as it pierced through it he raced after Falcon, while stopping his chakra flow to call on whatever Riatsu he could. Come on focus it through you and concentrate. Concentrate. He started gaining on Falcon, who was struggling with three wings and a damaged fourth one. Concentrate. He felt energy stirring within him, gathering from his abdomen and flowing into his scarf. Gather as much as you can and concentrate. His scarf started flickering with white fire. Concentrate. Damn it. His eyes gained white rings, and he stretched his arm out towards Falcon with a cry of, binding threads. Kashina. From the flickering aura surrounding the scarf, the white fire raced up Naruto's arm and shot ahead, taking the form of a spiritual chain made of the same flickering fire. It raced toward Falcon and speared through one of his wings before wrapping around him. W what what is this? He cried through the pain before he was slammed onto the ground by Naruto. Ah. Damn you, Shinobi. His red eyes widened when he saw the obvious Riatsu flowing from the blonde, flowing around him from the scarf he wore around his neck and shoulders. H how can how does a human have access to spiritual power? He screeched, enraged at being beaten, but also passing along the info vocally through the device around his neck. Naruto grinned proudly at his accomplishment. Guess I'm just a special kind of human. Remember this name, Hollow, Naruto Uzumaki, Shinobi and Spirit Fighter. He glared hatefully at the Uzumaki, lunging as much as he could through the chain holding him down. However, the action made the white fire blaze, burning him and making him screech before his body disintegrated into Raishi, spirit particles. The Raishi flowed into the fiery chain before it receded back into Naruto's scarf and died down, letting Naruto feel the slight increase in Riatsu from absorbing the defeated hollow. I wasn't expecting that, he mused aloud before fondly grasping his scarf. Binding threads that's what you're called, huh? Sounds pretty good to me, Tobeo. The threads in the scarf act like the bonds that weave through me and my precious people. He chuckled to himself at the corny attempt at being poetic before he started heading back to the town. Unknown to him, the two tracers cracked because of the lack of Raishi and crumbled into dust, scattering away in the evening breeze. It wouldn't be long before whatever was recorded would be seen and heard by Hueco Mundo's scientific espada. And it wouldn't be long before all of Hueco Mundo learned of the strange human with spiritual powers, calling himself a shinobi. Chapter 3 homecoming. It was a misty morning in the land of waves, and Tsunami was smiling as she prepared breakfast and lunch for her father and son. Ever since Inari had been inspired years ago by Team 7, he had strived to learn as much as he could from Tazuna about construction and carpentry. She mentally thanked a certain blonde member of Team 7 for helping her child believe again and find his inner strength. Tsunami took a moment to look out the window of her kitchen, spotting a small part of the large bridge her father had built and that Team 7 had restored the hope of her countrymen. I wonder how they're doing, she mused softly, returning to her cooking before she accidentally burned anything. It was around half an hour later that she finished cooking the food, and she was currently packing what she had cooked for her boys' lunches. Their breakfast plates had been set aside on the table, ready for them to eat as soon as they woke up. She was interrupted from her work by a knock at her door. Curious as to who could be calling this early in the morning, she headed for her home's entrance while wiping her hands on her apron. Humming. She called to the knocker just before she opened the door to the sight of a familiar, yet older, blonde. Wild and sunny blonde hair rested atop an angular face, highlighted with unique whisker markings and deep cerulean eyes. Around his shoulders was a green scarf with blue stripes, resting atop a black jacket that had an orange trim on the edges, interior, and zipper. The jacket itself was open, showing a sleeveless orange shirt resting beneath some mesh armor. Black pants were held up by a sash that held a metal plate with a hidden leaf symbol on it, the legs being tucked into black sandals that covered his shins with orange armor. Over it all, he wore a slightly damaged storm gray cloak with a hood up and a Yuzumaki swirl on the back. Unseen by her, the necklace of the first hokage was tucked beneath his orange shirt. Beside the blonde man was a young girl with turquoise hair, hazel eyes, and a hooded gown that covered her form save for her bare feet. The hood was down, showing a cute mask with a large crack that rested on her head. What stood out with the girl was the large scar that lined up with the crack in the mask and the red marking that stretched across her nose and cheeks below her eyes. The man grinned brightly at her and greeted, long time no see, a Tsunami-chan. Her eyes lit up in happiness at her visitor, stepping forward to embrace the blonde Yuzumaki. Naruto-kun. It's wonderful to see you again. He chuckled as he returned her embrace. Same here. Sorry for not visiting, but things have been busy these last few years. Oh, don't worry about it. I had a feeling that being a shinobi would cut into any time needed to come here. I'm just glad that you did visit. She then looked to the young girl and asked, so, who's this little one? Nell is Nell. The ranker greeted with a smile as bright as Naruto's. Nell is Ruto's friend after Ruto saved Nell from falling out a hole in the sky. Tsunami blinked at the explanation and looked back to Naruto, who was rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. It's a long story. Mind if we come in? Oh yes, of course. 
you came at a good time, also. I just finished making breakfast, and there's plenty extra to make you both a plate. You don't have to do that, Naruto tried to politely decline as he and Nell followed the woman into her home. Nonsense. You and Nell are guests in my home. The least I can do is offer you both something to eat and drink. Nell is hungry, Ruto the hazel-eyed girl notified, showing Naruto where she stood on Tsunami's offer. Sighing, Naruto gave the woman a smile and acquiesced, we'd love to have some of your cooking. Thanks, Tsunami-chan. She gave the young man a knowing smile. Women always get their way in the end, Naruto-kun. It's best that you learn that now before it's too late. She then left for the kitchen, giggling in amusement at the sight of Naruto's comical slump just before she departed. Yes, it was wonderful to see the blonde knucklehead again. A certain sage sighed in annoyance as he walked through the streets of the Hidden Leaf, heading for the Hokage Tower to speak with his old teammate, alone. He was not happy, knowing that Tsunade would be even less happy when she saw that Naruto was not with him. The way Tsunade had bonded so quickly with Minato's brat still surprised the sage, but he chalked it up to Naruto being the one to knock some sense into her and restoring her faith. It was amazing how Naruto was able to sympathize with others and change them for the better. Tsunade was just one of many that Jiraiya had witnessed change after meeting Naruto, the new Kazakiage and the branch Hyuga prodigy being two others that got sense literally knocked into them. And apparently, there were others that he reached out to and changed before they died. It was because he wanted to visit their graves that Jiraiya wasn't making a bigger stink about leaving him to face Tsunade alone. Hell, he still took time to visit the memorial stone and talk with friends and loved ones that he lost. Finally making it to the office, he decided to try and lessen the Hokage's anger by using the door instead of the window. He knew she hated when he did that and he'd rather have more time before she punched him into orbit. Knocking, he waited for her to grant him permission before he entered her office, already dreading what was going to happen when he saw the confusion written on her face. Jurei where's Naruto? He sighed and simply said, wave. She blinked at the single worded answer. Why? He's visiting some old friends and a couple of graves. That's all he told me last night. He and the other brat were gone this morning before I even woke up. She groaned and pinched the bridge of her nose. And you didn't follow him because. He can take care of himself. I am considering this a test to see how far he's come without me around as a buffer for bigger threats, the man answered boastfully. The dry look she gave him showed the man that his answer was stupid. You and I know that's a load of bull. Why did you really come here without him? Taking a seat on the small couch in the office, the toad sage got comfortable before regarding Tsunade seriously. Naruto's been hiding something from everyone. I think that girl he saved may be connected to it, but I also think that he's been hiding this secret long before he met her. Steepling her fingers, Tsunade asked, and what makes you suspect the brat of hiding anything? More importantly, why do you care? Everyone is entitled to their own personal secrets. Just because you're so openly brazen about anything doesn't mean that everyone else acts on the same wavelength. Usually, I wouldn't be concerned about his secrets, he agreed. But, he was acting so much differently than what I was used to before I took him on the trip. He wasn't a ball of endless energy all the time, he was collected and calm. He didn't complain much, except for when I left him on certain exercises for a few hours. Hell, he didn't even make a fuss when I spent the first year drilling in the basics that he still hadn't mastered. I'll admit that it's odd to not hear about his complaints, but maybe he was just trying to give this trip his full efforts. From what I can tell, you're the first person to give him hands-on instruction without other people getting in the way, like how Kakashi had to divide his workload between his other two students. Actually, I think you'd better take a closer look at what Kakashi taught his brats, because Naruto was seriously lacking in basics, dispelling Jinjutsu being a prime example of something he was never taught. Tsunade frowned faintly at that. I'll be sure to look into it. But, how does Naruto's change in attitude qualify him hiding something? It's just the start. During one of our spars after he rescued the brat, he pulled out some kinjutsu that I know for a fact I never showed to him. I barely tried to teach him the basics before he walked off. At first, I thought he was just not interested, but now, I'm thinking someone else taught him, and he was hiding what he knew. Every shinobi needs a trump card, Jiraiya, she tried shooting down. He frowned at a response. Fine. How about how he left a girl with a clone of his before walking out of a town's festival and had a fight with nothing? That sounds completely ridiculous. I thought he was simply testing out some combinations, but I saw him make a Rasengan and struggle with nothing, while a clone did the same with a kunai. It was like some unseen enemies were targeting him and he fought them off. I couldn't even sense anything in the area except for his chakra. Invisible shinobi that could erase their chakra presence. She guessed, frowning now. Possibly however, the biggest shock was when he chased after something I couldn't see and then called out his mother's name, as if it were some sort of technique. Tsunade looked surprised. He called out Kashina's name. Yes, and his chakra faded from my senses as he did so. 
whatever those invisible enemies were using, Naruto has access to it, more than likely for a while now. You need to speak with him about this, he won't talk to me. And why exactly is that, Jiraiya? She pressed, her anger bleeding into her voice. Why wouldn't Naruto feel comfortable discussing things with you? Officially sweating, Jiraiya gave a strained grin and nervously replied, well, uh he thinks that this trip was a waste. The next moment, a sage-shaped hole was formed going through the roof of the Hokage Tower, while a pervert reached for the stars. Standing in front of two makeshift grave markers was Naruto, who was staring at the small crosses with somber eyes. Behind one of them was a massive sword stabbed into the earth, and the other had a white cloth draped respectfully atop it. Blue eyes then slowly panned up and saw spectral chains attached to the crosses, stretching above them and connecting to a pair of spirits that the Yuzumaki was hoping to see. To Buza Haku he greeted softly, giving them both a faint smile. The demon of the mist looked to the older blonde that he last saw as a brat. You've grown up from the whining whelp I first met, he remarked. To Buza Sama Haku began, her voice as gentle as ever, must you try and instigate. She then returned Naruto's smile and added, it's wonderful to see you again, Naruto-kun. Same here, Haku. I'm sorry I never visited. A lot has happened since Team 7's mission here in the Land of Waves. I'm more curious on how the hell you can see us, brat, Zabuza cut in. As far as I can tell, you're still alive and kicking. How can you see us when we're dead? I've been able to see and speak with spirits for as long as I can remember. I'm still trying to figure out why I never saw your spirits before I returned back home all those years ago. Perhaps this gift you have needed to mature alongside you? Or maybe our spirits hadn't tethered to the graves you made for us in time for you to speak with us. Haku suggested. Maybe but, I'm not going to dwell on it. What matters now is that I can see you, and I've wanted to talk to you too for a while now. What about, kid? I wanted to say thanks to you both and that I'm sorry that we ended up fighting. I couldn't help blaming myself about your deaths, even when I know that I did all that I could to try and prevent them. Kid, I learned early on in my shinobi career that there are plenty of things you can't change. Shit happens, and strong people move on through the hard times while weaker people dwell on them. I'll admit that you helped me regain my strength before I died, and that wouldn't have happened if we never started off on opposite sides. Plus, Haku added, you showed me what it could have been to have a friend, someone who could understand my pain and help me through it. I regret not being able to expand on that friendship, but I'm still glad that I met you, Naruto-kun. He smiled sadly at the Mist Shinobi spirits. Yeah I'm glad I met you both, too. You two inspired me into forming my own Nindo and taught me what real strength meant. You helped me see that being a shinobi wasn't some silly game and that I needed to be the best I can for the ones I cared about. A soft chuckle escaped him as he declared, I made a promise to myself that I would never go back on my word and that I would risk everything that I am for the people I cherish. I made that vow right here, he pointed to where he was standing, and I've made sure to stick to it ever since. The two spirits smiled at the blonde Yuzumaki, smirking in Zabuza's case. Kid, the swordsman began, do me a favor. Anything, Naruto promised. Desturing to his buried weapon, the demon of the mist declared, take up my sword. It was never meant to collect dust and rust away on some hill. It's a weapon, and it should be used as such. Naruto was shocked at the request. Why me? You helped me end my story as a human instead of another demon. You broke through my self-made illusions of shinobi being nothing more than tools and weapons, proving that we're all still human inside, that we can feel, that we can dream, and that we can stand together. I can think of nobody else to pass on my sword to, because I know that you will give it a legacy that generations will recognize. The two men stared one another down, the larger descending to the ground to stand before the blonde and place a large hand on his shoulder. Naruto Yuzumaki I passed the Kubikurum Jman to you. Naruto felt himself standing a fraction taller at the man's declaration, watching as he stepped aside to allow Naruto access to the sword. Stepping up to it, the Yuzumaki reached out with his right hand to grasp the handle, feeling a sudden breeze blow past him and flare up his cloak and jacket. With a determined gaze, Naruto gripped the handle tighter and removed the blade from its earthen sheath, holding it with ease, while Zabuza smirked and Haku smiled proudly. Use it with pride, brat. You're carrying my legacy with you, after all, the mist demon warned. Resting the blade on his shoulder, Naruto turned back to the two spirits with his signature grin. No worries, Zabuza. I promise that it's in good hands. The two nodded before their spectral forms gave off a faint glow. Ha looks like it's finally time, seems that way, Zabuza Sama, Haku agreed, sounding sad about what was going to happen. Naruto said nothing, simply gazing at the two spirits somberly before he felt movement beneath his cloak. Looking down, he saw that his scarf was covered in his riatsu before it split apart into the thousands of threads that made it, wrapping around his right wrist before attaching to the chains of Zabuza and Haku. White spiritual fire outlined the trio, slowly absorbing the chains and safely detaching them from the two spirits before changing them into Raishi and assimilating them into Naruto. 
A rush of power was felt flowing through him, building up in a flourish before expelling like a breath of air. The power froze the ground beneath him while the energy flowed out from his body and took the shape of a demonic face that grinned darkly behind him. Dabuza and Haku were left slightly awed at what happened while Naruto realized what his scarf had done. Binding threads it really does connect me to those I hold close. What are you talking about, kid? I mean that, since you both influenced me deeply on a spiritual level, my scarf let me inherit some of your abilities. It's called binding threads, and I awakened its power when I unlocked my own spiritual power. Sothis means that. Haku began. That I can keep both of your legacies alive, Naruto finished, giving them both a grin bursting with determination and pride. Don't worry about me, you guys. I'll be fine now that part of you will always be with me in spirit. I promise that I won't let you two down. As their spiritual forms began to fade into Raishi, Zabuza chuckled at the Uzumaki, while Haku gave him a beautiful smile. They both nodded to him in respect before they fully faded away, the wind of the land of waves, carrying the last of their spirits out to the ocean, while Naruto's scarf reformed and situated itself over his cloak, taking the form of a makeshift holster for the Kubikaramjum. Smiling, he took a breath before flourishing the massive weapon and setting it into its new holster with ease, grinning at his success. He then turned to the crosses one last time and bowed to them in respect, holding it for a few seconds while silently wishing them a peaceful rest. With his final farewell given, Naruto straightened himself up before turning around and heading back to Tsunami's home, feeling the warmth of the sun on his back as it shined behind him and hit the two graves with a helpful light. The next morning, Naruto and Nell bid goodbye to Tsunami and her family, while the blonde Yuzumaki promised to visit again when he could. He shared a hug with the woman and her son before shaking Tazuna's hand, turning around so that Nell could climb onto his shoulders. Giving the family one last grin, he took off at full speed to the hidden leaf. Was it just me, or did that kid seem more at peace? Tazuna asked his daughter while Inari looked up in curiosity. Tsunami smiled to the two men in her life. Yes, he did. Whatever he did yesterday seems to have lifted a heavy weight off his shoulders. Maybe it's because he took on that sort of abuses. Maybe, Tazuna agreed. Still, I never thought that he'd be the one to pull it out of the ground after so many people tried and failed. Zabuza must have been waiting for Naruto Nai to return and pick it up, Inari suggested, earning thoughtful looks from his mother and grandfather. Maybe so, sweetheart, Tsunami agreed with a gentle smile before she ushered them inside to give them their lunches for the day. Before entering herself, she took one last glance down the road Naruto took and whispered, take care of yourself, Naruto-kun. Faster, Rudo. Faster. Nell cheered as she held on to Naruto throughout his sprint. Go faster. Ha. Hey. You asked for it, Nell-chan. He replied, gathering chakra into his legs and shooting off in a blur that left a faint sonic boom. He then kicked off the ground, leaping high into the air and getting Nell to squeal in delight. Hang on, Nell-chan. Naruto warned before he gathered his Riatsu and started kicking off the Raishi in the air, essentially leaping throughout the sky as he raced to the hidden leaf. Woohoo! Nell cheered as they rushed through the air, quickly arriving near the gates of the great village. Deciding not to make a scene, Naruto cut off the flow of his Riatsu and rapidly fell back to the earth, making Nell cry out in surprise before it turned into more excitement. Just before he landed, he had the Raishi cushion his impact so that he landed with the tap of a footstep. Man, I love Riatsu, Naruto exclaimed to himself before he turned to the large gate of the hidden leaf and headed for it. Once he was within speaking range, he called out, Yo, Katetsu. Izumo. Look who's back home. The two Chunin gate guards turned to the voice before they both smiled in recognition. Naruto. Good to see you, man. Katetsu greeted before he took note of the girl on his shoulders and the sword on his back. Izumo noticed them also and exclaimed, Whoa. Was your time away that exciting? Naruto grinned knowingly as he answered, you guys have no idea. Anyway, I'd better hurry up and meet Bachan before she gets even more pissed. I'm technically late, after all. By how long? Katetsu asked. I was supposed to be here yesterday. Hey, maybe I should make up some sort of excuse like how Kakashi sensei usually does. The two Chunin snorted at the idea before they grinned in agreement. Make sure it's a good one. Izumo bid before Naruto waved farewell to them and walked off. Nah, Ruto. Who are those two? Nell asked, oblivious to the stare she and Naruto were receiving. Oh, those two were old friends of mine. They used to help me pull off pranks here in the village, he answered, aware of the stares, but ignoring them expertly. Right now, I'm going to introduce you to someone who I like to call Bachan. Is she Rito's grandma? No, but she's old enough to be, he informed with a chuckle, returning his focus to the road. I'm sure she'll like you, though. Nell thinks Nell will like her too. Another chuckle escaped him as he kept talking with Nell, telling her about the many parts of the village she pointed to and asked about. He was so relaxed around the young-looking Aranker that he never noticed that he passed by a small eatery that had a certain San Kinoichi as a patron. 
Teal green eyes looked on in surprise at the sunny blonde that walked past her with an excitable green clothed kid, literally hanging off his shoulders. She couldn't help but blush faintly at how his carefree smile brought out his natural appeal, noting that the last two and a half years allowed the Yuzumaki to fill out nicely. Finishing her meal, she gathered her belongings before leaving money for the bill and taking off to the Hokage Tower. She had to prepare the Hokage for a certain maelstrom's homecoming. Should be here any minute now, Jiraiya spoke up from his position on the windowsill. I've been keeping track of him with one of my scouter toads. I still find that to be a betrayal of trust, Jiraiya, Tsunade replied. You know that he wouldn't keep tabs on you like that. I wouldn't have to resort to this if he didn't hide things from me. I'm his teacher and he's my apprentice. He shouldn't need to hide anything. Everyone is entitled to their own privacy, pervert. You just ignore that entitlement and use it for those damnable books of yours. Ma, Tsunade Sama, Kakashi spoke up from his position against the wall, reading the newest edition of Jureya's book series. Everyone needs to draw inspiration from somewhere. The Hokage gave a dry look to the Jonin, earning his infamous eye smile. She was prevented from commenting when her office door opened and Sakura walked in. Is he here yet? She asked, not bothering to greet anyone since she caught up with Kakashi and Jureya yesterday. Almost, Kakashi answered before they all heard a knock at the door. Enter. Tsunade called, prompting the door to open again and reveal to Mari. Yes. Just wanted to let you all know that a certain someone is almost here, and he's not alone, the Sand Kinoichi informed. We know already, Jureya replied dryly. Well, not all of us, but the important people do. Kakashi and Sakura gave the man dull stares at his comment, while Tsunade fraught an amused smirk at her old teammate's easy dismissal of them. How soon do you think he'll be, Tamari-san? Shizune asked politely. Should be coming up now. I managed to get here while he was just down the street. I saw him passing by when I was having lunch and hurried over so I could tell you. Tell them what? A familiar, yet more mature, voice asked. When everyone turned their attention to him, Naruto raised a brow at their mixed stares. What? You guys never seen a whiskered blonde before. Tsunade shook off her surprised stare for a stern look. Brat, where were you? Here, Naruto sheepishly grinned while rubbing the back of his head. Yeah sorry I'm late. You see, I was caught up in some sudden waves before I washed ashore and met up with an old demon and princess. We talked for a while before I was gifted with a demon's sword, which helped guide me home. Everyone, minus a certain scarecrow, sweat dropped at the excuse. Kakashi simply chuckled and gave the Yuzumaki a thumbs up. Nice one. Learn from the best bullshitter I know, Naruto replied cheekily before crouching slightly to let Nell jump down from his shoulders. Nell-chan, these are some of my friends. You already know the pervert, but the other guy with white hair was my old teacher, Kakashi. She looked to the jonin, who gave her his signature smile. Cyclops. She exclaimed in shock, her eyes wide. Awkwardly chuckling, Kakashi replied, actually, I'm not a. Then there's Sakura, Naruto interrupted, making the man slump comically. She's my old teammate. The pin cat looked to the turquoise-haired child, giving an unsure smile. Uh, hi. Nell, on the other hand, moved closer to Naruto and gripped his pant leg, giving Sakura an accusing stare. Um, why is she staring at me like that? Sakura asked Naruto, who shrugged. Nell kept her small glare before she asked, what's your relationship with Ruto? Huh? Sakura asked, unable to think of anything else to say in response. The others, meanwhile, found the moment very amusing and stifled their chuckles. Anyway, Naruto resumed, the blonde lady with her hair up is Tamari. She's a sister of Gara. You mean Sandy? Nell asked curiously, making Naruto grin, while Tamari face palmed at the nickname for her brother. Yep. She's really strong and uses her fan to make wind attacks. The Yuzumaki answered, earning him some brownie points with a wind mistress. Wow. Nell exclaimed with sparkly eyes. Nell wants to see. Tamari smirked at the girl, moving over to pat her on the head. Maybe some other time, squirt. The lady next to the other blonde is Shizune. She's really nice. You like her. Shizune gave Nell a warm smile and greeted, it's wonderful to meet you, Nell-chan. Nell is happy to meet Shy Shy too. She returned, making the medical Kinoichi giggle behind her hand at the nickname. And lastly is Tsunade Bachan. Naruto rounded off, earning a tick mark from the Hokage, while Nell looked to her in wonder. Bachan is pretty. She declared. She doesn't look old at all. Naruto bit his lip to keep from laughing as Tsunade's tick mark gained two friends. That's everyone. Everyone else, meet Nell-chan. Nell waved brightly, showing a childish innocence to the others. Sakura, still a bit rattled from the sudden accusation, simply stood in silence. Kakashi offered a lazy wave in response, while Tamari and Shizune smiled at the girl. Tsunade gave Nell a short glance before returning her attention to Naruto. We have a lot to discuss, brat. Everyone else but Jureya leave, she ordered. Me too, Tsunade-sama. Shizune asked in slight surprise. Yes. This is something private. 
Are you sure I shouldn't stay as well, then? Kakashi questioned. If it's important enough, I'll fill you in later. Until then, leave. While he was slightly miffed, Kakashi nodded before he led Sakura out of the office, and Shizun led Tamari out. Nell stayed beside Naruto, earning a raised brow from Tsunade. I want her out of here too, Naruto, she explained sternly, making Nell move closer to Naruto. The Yuzumaki frowned faintly at that. You don't need to be so harsh about it, he groused before he crouched down to face Nell. I need to talk with Pervy Sage and Bachan for a little bit. I leave you with a clone that will take you home. Okay. Nell wants Rito to come too. She cried, giving him a pouting glare. I know, he replied calmly, patting her head with a smile and surprising Tsunade with his caring tone. But I'll be back as soon as I'm done here. Then we can go get some Raymond and I'll introduce you to Tuchi and A.M. Nichan. Can you wait that long, Nell Chan? She kept her pout. Will Rito's copy play with Nell? Of course, he will. He answered with a grin. Just tell him what you want to play, and he'll play with you, promise. When she heard that word, she finally dropped her pout and smiled. Okay. He patted her head again, while a shadow clone popped into existence beside him, once again surprising Tsunade, since no seals were used. Take Nelchan to the apartment. Whatever she wants to play is fair game. Even eternal tag. The clone asked with a grimace. Any game? Resigned to his fate, the clone crouched down for Nell to jump on his shoulders before he left the office. The real Naruto then moved to the wall to lean the Kubikrumjm against it before he stood before Tsunade's desk. So? What was so important you sent everyone else out? He asked with a frown. Don't give me that look, brat. You were supposed to be here yesterday, and I'm not going to deal with your usual attitude. I'm the one who's angry right now. Understand. Yes, Hokage-sama, was his reply, making Jiraiya hide a wince at the steel in his voice. It reminded him of Kashina whenever she was getting angry. The Hokage simply nodded before she continued, now, Jiraiya informed me yesterday about how he felt the last two and a half years went. I want your opinion on them. Anything I accomplished on that trip, save for one thing, could have easily been done here, Hokage-sama, Naruto answered professionally, his face betraying nothing. Tsunade fraught a frown at that, not used to seeing the side of Naruto. And what was the one thing you think couldn't have been accomplished? Saving Nelchan and taking her in. If we didn't go on this trip, no one would have found her until she had already died. You can't honestly expect me to believe that she fell out of some hole in the sky, brat, she shot down. Believe what you will, Hokage-sama. All I'm saying is that I was in the right place at the right time when it came to her recovery. I'm just grateful we were near a medical facility aligned to the land of fire. And do you think you'll be able to handle the responsibility of taking care of a child with your circumstances? She pressed. If you mean the Akatsuki, then yes. I know that I'll be able to keep her safe. If you mean the Kaiubi, then I'm sure I can keep myself in check. The last comment was practically spat in her face, and she winced at how he took her question. Naruto, you know I didn't mean it like that. Was that all, Hokage-sama? He asked without missing a beat, still not showing anything. She opened her mouth to speak, but she backed down when she realized that continuing this would only widen the rift she had started to build between her and Naruto. And she didn't want that. Naruto, I'm not trying to start anything with you, she stated sincerely. I'm just worried about what has happened since you left, and I don't want you to think that I don't trust you. When he didn't answer, she continued, please, can we talk about this normally and not as a shinobi in their cage. Slowly, Naruto dropped his professional look for a small frown that showed his slight hurt. Kinda hard not to feel that way when you're asking questions that make it sound like you're doubting my abilities. I'm not going to lose control of the fox, Tsunade. I thought you trusted me on that. I do, Naruto, she replied. I'm just concerned about the choices you're making. Taking care of a child at your age is a big responsibility. Not to mention that you're doing it alone without any prior experience. If I was able to take care of myself for years without anyone helping, I think I can manage looking after a little girl who has nothing, he fired back with narrowed eyes. She and Jiraiya both winced at that, honestly forgetting how little support Naruto actually had while he was growing up. Anyway, I'm sure that's not the only reason you sent everyone else out. What else are you trying to figure out? You've been hiding some things, kid, Jiraiya spoke up this time. Things that you should have mentioned before. Why didn't you tell me that you already had a decent understanding of Kenjutsu before we left on this trip? Because it was none of your business. What I knew before you decided to train me is my business, and nobody else's. Besides, I should be the one asking what the hell you both are hiding from me. We're not, don't you dare try to bullshit me anymore, Tsunade. Naruto cut off, visibly angry. How dare you two sit there and accuse me of hiding anything from you when you both hid the truth from me? Why should I trust you when you wouldn't even have the guts to tell me who my parents were? So, you did know Jiraiya Muse with a frown. That's why you called out Kashina's name that night of the festival. Spying on me again, you perverted bastard. Naruto snarked. 
Mentally, he was berating himself for not noticing the sage that night. Yes. When my student keeps things from me, I make it a point to look into it, even if I have to keep tabs on him. I'm not the Akatsuki or any other criminal. You spying on me makes me feel like you see me that way, and it's not fair when you're bigger criminals than I am. What kind of people decides when the time is right for a child to know about their parents? Naruto, we just wanted to keep you safe, Tsunade tried to reason. Safe. If that's your real reason, then where the hell were you earlier in my life? Where were either of you on the nights I questioned why I was alone, or when I had to teach myself how to find food, or when I was pushed away by ignorant parents who feared me? You too, and even the old man, just never trusted me. His anger was boiling now. Hell, I never found out about the fox until I was almost killed as an academy student. And I'll be the old man would have kept lying to my face about it if that bastard Mizuki never had the chance to spill the beans that night. You weren't ready to know. Jiraiya argued. Who are you to judge when a Jinch Kriki should know about the biju they carry? What if I went on a mission without know about it and lost control? Whose fault would it be then? Because it sure as hell wouldn't be mine. Jiraiya would have argued some more, but Tsunade cut him off. You're right, Naruto, she declared, getting both of them to look at her. Kishina was told about the Kaiubi before she became its container, and you never got a choice in the matter. It wasn't fair to you to grow up with a stigma that you never understood and that others kept secret from you. To be honest, I'm surprised that you never snapped under the emotional pain and fell victim to the fox's influence. Fah. Clearly, she's never seen your more willful moments, the Biju commented. I'm stronger than you think, Tsunade, Naruto spoke up. I'm just sick of people demanding I trust them when they never return the sentiment. I understand. So, I'm asking for a clean slate from this point on, she suggested. I don't want there to be any more secrets that can ruin this bond we have. You may not think so right now, but I do care about you, Naruto. I don't want to lose anyone else that I care about, not when I've lost so many of them already. He was tempted to tell her that Mito was still around, but he kept quiet and gave her a small smile in agreement. I think I can live with that. I'm still upset, but I can't keep dwelling on this if I want to move forward. Otherwise I'll be like Sasuke and how he never moved on from what Itachi did. Right thank you for understanding, Naruto. I still want to talk some more about your trip, but I think it's best if we hold off on that for a little while. We all need time to think about what's been said today. Nodding again, Naruto moved over to the Kubikarabnchum and holstered it. Turning back to the others, he gave Tsunade another small smile before leaving the office. You should have asked about that other thing, Jiraiya grumbled. Only you seem to be so concerned about it, she shot down. Besides, if I pushed any further, I doubt he would have agreed to give me another chance. I wasn't lying when I said I didn't want to lose anyone else, whether it's through death or any other method. Snorting, the toad sage didn't reply to her comment and left her office via the window. He had his own thoughts to settle. That evening, Naruto was seen standing before Mito's spirit before he gave her a warm embrace that she returned without hesitation. It's wonderful to see you again, child. I can see how much you've grown, and not just physically. A lot happened during the past couple of years, Sensei, he explained. I figured out how deep my connection to the spiritual side of the world goes, and I met someone who came from a separate part of that world. She's hurt, and I need to keep working so that I can help her heal. Sounds like quite the story. Why don't you tell me everything you've experienced so far concerning your spiritual connection? Maybe I can help you sort things out. Smiling gratefully, Naruto spent the next couple of hours regaling his ancestor about his first meeting with Nell and Neliel. He then told her about what Neliel informed him of Waco Mundo and about why she's forced into a younger form with fractured memories of her past. After that, he told her about how he and the Kaiubi figured out how to unlock his spiritual power, about the true potential of his mother's scarf, and how Zabuza and Haku's spirits helped him grow stronger. He then showed her what he could do with binding threads to prove how much he had grown, allowing her to see the manifestations of his connections to Kashina, Zabuza, and Haku. Finally, he told her about his encounter with the Two Hollows and his concerns about running into more in the future. I'm worried about what else may show up. One of those hollows threw out a name, which means that someone else in controlling them or is in charge of them. I haven't seen anyone else reacting to spiritual presences, and I can't help thinking that I'm the only one in this fight that I know is going to come. You fear that your efforts won't be enough when the time comes, that you will become overwhelmed with having to deal with these malevolent spirits, as well as the Akatsuki on the physical plane, she summarized, earning a nod. Have you tried to give Nell some of your Riatsu again? Not yet I wanted to be sure I had decent control over it before I tried. Based on what you've told and shown me, I think you'll be fine, Mito assured him with a supportive smile. You've grown from the small boy I met so long ago, Naruto-kun. You've become a young man that I know can carry on the legacy of our people, bringing the Yuzumaki name back into the shinobi world with confidence. 
He smiled tearfully at her words, feeling a swell of pride at the sheer belief her voice portrayed concerning his abilities. Thank you Mito Bachan. Her smile softened at the title, having only heard him call her that a handful of times. She gave him another hug, letting him relax in her embrace before she pulled back and cupped his cheek lovingly. You remind me so much of Kashina-chan I see her in you more and more as time goes on, and I know without a doubt that she'd be proud of the man her son has become. He chuckled through his lingering tears, relishing in the warmth he felt from the moment. Now, get back to Nell and do what must be done. Don't rush it, don't force it, and don't despair over it. Let things run their course and do your best. I will, he promised, giving her a bow of both respect and gratitude, before he took off back to his apartment, leaving Mito smiling towards his departing form. When Naruto returned to his apartment, he saw that Nell was still asleep, and the clone he left to watch over her was reading through his personal notebook on Kenjutsu formulas. Thanks for keeping an eye on her, he said, earning a grin from the clone. Hey, she's important to more than just you, boss, he replied before dispelling, giving Naruto his memories. Shaking off the mental input, Naruto moved over to Nell's resting form and smiled softly as he gently brushed some of her bangs behind her ear. His hand then moved slowly from her hair to the damaged mask, resting atop the crack before Naruto closed his eyes in concentration. But months training his Riatsu, it came to him with ease now, and he slowly opened his eyes again to reveal the white rings within them to the world. Letting his spiritual energy flow, he had it build up in his hand before he slowly began transferring it into Nell's mask, the action producing a slowly building white glow from the blackness within. Like it did before when he accidentally gave her his Riatsu, the eye holes of Nell's mask slowly started to glow pink, before they flashed once and blinded Naruto with their brilliance. The room was covered in pink smoke that slowly dispersed into the air, revealing Nelia laying comfortably atop Naruto's bed. She started to stir as Naruto removed his hand from her mask, blearily opening her eyes to his blurred image, before she blinked a few times to get them into focus. Naruto-san. He gave her a warm smile as he greeted, nice to see you again, Nelia Lai finally unlocked my Riatsu. Sitting up with a groan, she reached out with her senses and smiled faintly at the feel of Naruto's spiritual core. So, you have. That's wonderful news. I'm hoping that I can restore you to this form soon, but I know that it will take some time. Yes. The damage I sustained was more than I realized, and my spiritual energy needs to be resorted from the distorted mess it has become. However, with continual doses of your Riatsu fixing the flow, I should hopefully return to this form soon. Glad to hear that. I made a promise to help you, after all, he reminded her with his signature grin, earning a soft smile from her. That you did, to which I'm grateful. She closed her eyes and took a feel of her energy, mentally estimating how much time she had before she reverted back into Nell. I believe I may have enough time to hear how you unlock your Riatsu and why it feels so strong already. I'm curious as to what you did between our first meeting and now. Grinning a bit wider, Naruto sat down on the chair his clone was using before he said, I guess I should start by saying that my connection to the spiritual world has been with me since the night of my birth. At her understanding nod, he continued, see, I was born on October 10th, and on that night, a great beast known as the Kaiubi was released from my mother. For the first time in years, Naruto shared the circumstances of his birth with another person, and he knew deep down that she wouldn't judge him like so many had done before. After all, Nelial was more than the humans of the elemental nations. She would understand, he knew. Chapter 4. Spiritual Revelations. You're certainly a unique case in regard to discovering spiritual awareness, Naruto-san, Nelial spoke after hearing Naruto's story. To have been around an entity of death and to have the seal you carry bear its essence, I'm not sure if anyone else like you exists. Yeah, I guess I'm one of a kind, he replied, his tone joking while his face showed a lingering layer of somberness. I just wish I had more time with my parents, though. I'm grateful for them saving me and letting me live my life, but a part of me wonders if the cost was worth it. Don't speak things like that. He looked to her in surprise, catching the stern look on her face. You even courting such thoughts burns their sacrifice, Naruto-san. It's almost as if you lust for more than what you already have, your life. I didn't mean it like that, he tried to argue. I just I miss them, you know. It was hard growing up without anyone, surrounded by people who either want nothing to do with you or wish you would just disappear. An existence like that is similar to how we hollows live our lives in Hueco Mundo. We are, at times, simple creatures who only desire to fill a void that is always lingering within us. And to do so, we feed, whether the feeding is on human souls, Shinigami, or even our fellow hollows. It's a sad existence, but it is our existence. Understanding flowed through him, seeing a kinship between himself and the woman before him. I'm sorry you have to live like that, Nelial. Do not apologize for something beyond your control, Naruto-san, she replied, gracing him with a faint smile. I appreciate the sympathy, and I can understand where those feelings are coming from, but you never knew about us hollows until you met me. 
I'm almost afraid to find out what our encounter will spell for your home and the souls residing in it. Hey, if anyone else shows up looking for trouble, I'll be there to lay the smackdown on them, to Bayo. He declared, flexing an arm with a determined grin. Her smile grew at that, finding herself believing in him and his declarations. I hope you won't have to, Naruto-san. She tensed when her energy spiked briefly, wincing in discomfort. I've run out of time. Oh I'll try to find a more lasting solution as soon as I can, Neliel. I promise. She smiled at him. I know you will. Thank you for your effort so far. I've appreciated our talks and I believe I can see just the kind of person you really are, Naruto-san. Please keep watching over my younger self, of course. He replied with a grin, watching as Neliel was engulfed in smoke again, and Nell was revealed passed out on the bed. His grin softened to a smile as he moved the blanket to cover Nell, patting her gently on the head when he finished before heading for his couch. Home sweet home he murmured as he waited for sleep to claim him. It was the early hours before dawn when Naruto jolted awake with a soft gasp, his eyes wide as he stared at the ceiling of his apartment. Slowly, he calmed down before he roused himself to a sitting position, rubbing the exhaustion out of his eyes. Another one, he muttered. You have some strange dreams, brat, stranger than the ones you had when you were still a Raymond-obsessed idiot. They feel so real, though I see places that I've never been to before, and I see people that I have vague feelings for, whether they're friends or enemies. Do you think they're more than dreams? Yeah I think that they may be memories. I'm seeing people with hidden mist headbands, or others with hidden leaf ones, people I've never met before. And you have awakened your spiritual links to your mother and those two from Wave. Perhaps that connection has reached to your soul, and you're viewing the lives they've lived. So I'm seeing what made them the people they were before they passed on. In a sense. I'm seeing what you see during these dream sequences, and some of those people knew Kashina during my time sealed into her. What about that woman with black hair that mom talked to a lot? She kinda looked like Sasuke. Ah, that Ichiha woman yes, Kashina spoke of her often. I would assume they were close friends. As for her looking like the Ichiha who turned on you, I can only assume it's because she may have been his mother. Sasuke's mother knew my mom that's not something I was expecting, he mused, moving over to his window and looking toward the direction of the old Ichiha district. Hey Fox, what now, boy? You know how Mito sensei was chained to that mask shrine the Uzumaki guarded? What if there were still some Ichiha that never passed on since Itachi killed them? I'd be pleased to hear about them suffering, honestly. The Ichiha and I are not allies, considering how I was used by two of them throughout my existence. Not to mention that, considering what? The growl was heard. Nothing just forget I said anything. Hinda hard to, but I'll wait until you want to talk about it. At any rate, I'm gonna see if any of them are still there. With his decision made, Naruto made a shadow clone to watch over Nell before he left his apartment through the window and started heading for the Ichiha district. Binding threads had once again take the form of a scarf that fluttered in the wind as Naruto leapt across the rooftops before landing at the entrance of the district. Just from his point of view, he frowned sadly at the empty district that looked more akin to a ghost town than a once proud home. He stepped through the entryway, walking along the pathways and looking at the abandoned homes and shops. I think that Sasu came to this place every day since the loss of his people, only to be constantly attacked by memories of people he once knew, people he vowed to avenge. Part of Naruto sympathized with Sasuke, but he couldn't accept the way his wayward teammate was going about it. He had to make Sasuke come to his senses, somehow. A sound of movement caught his attention, followed by the briefest pulse of spiritual energy. Frowning, Naruto started to let his own riatsu flow as he moved more cautiously, not wanting to be caught off guard by whatever was lurking around. A sudden scream of horror was heard, and his eyes widened before he rushed to the source. He turned a corner before freezing in shock at the sight of a winged figure, pinning down a soul with black hair and eyes. Before he could do anything, the figure lunged its head down and bit the head of the soul, lifting the entire body and letting it fall down its throat with a disturbing gulp. Hello he muttered, making the figure twitch before it turned to face him. With the moon now hitting its face, he saw that this hollow had a feline tail and hind legs, while the forelegs looked more bird-like. It had wings as black as night, while the mask on its head took the design of a raven, while a feathery mane was seen around its neck. If he had to simplify it, Naruto would describe it as a griffin with raven features. The hollow growled at him before rushing forward, intent on devouring the delicious spiritual energy before it. Naruto responded by diving to the side while forming a clone, having it distract the hollow as he leapt onto a rooftop and had binding threads reform itself into a pair of cloth gloves. The clone dodged a swipe of the hollow's talons, retaliating with a punch to its masked face, before the real Naruto dove in with an ice-covered fist that struck its chest. The blow sent the hollow stumbling back, while its chest fur froze and formed icy barbs that dug into its skin. Furious, the hollow set itself on all fours, its wings spread wide in intimidation as it screeched, sending forth a sonic cry that forced Naruto to cover his ears, while his clone dispelled. 
the sonic cry disoriented him enough for the hollow to turn and strike him with its tail, whipping him across the chest and sending him flying through two buildings before here all to a stop with a painful groan. Huck, that hurts. Focus, brat. I'll deal with the damage, you just worry about taking that thing down. Mentally nodding, Naruto let his Riatsu surge to its limit, the energy taking the shape of a grinning demonic face that floated over his body. The hollow saw the aura and screeched out challengingly before it used its wings to launch into the air, moving to pounce atop Naruto's form. Forming a Rasengan, Naruto mixed his Riatsu into it, changing it from azure blue to a vicious indigo, with some frost leaking from it. He met the pounce with a powerful leap, sending his grinning aura ahead of him as a makeshift battering ram that stalled the hollow enough for him to get a clean shot. Frostbite Rasengan. He cried as the attack dug into the torso of the hollow, grinding into the skin and leaving a burning layer of ice in its wake. It then dispelled in an expulsion of power, sending the hollow back down to the earth with a booming crash. Still in the air, Naruto flipped his body around so that he could land a finishing blow. I may have stolen this move from Tsune Bachan, but here goes. Heaven kick of pain. His heel crashed into the mask of the hollow, cracking it with a Riatsu surging from the hit, before a portion of the mask surrounding the left eye broke away, revealing a red eye with three Tomo surrounding it. Blue eyes widened at that as Naruto leapt back, staying in a ready stance, in case the hollow still had some fight in it. Who are you? He ordered. The visible eye looked hazy for a moment before the hollow shook its head, and the eye looked more focused. The eye looked like it spoke, the voice feminine in sound. Who are you? I'm not going to ask again. The Sharingan eye studied the blonde before it widened in shock. Kashina you look like Kashina. His stance faltered at that, blue eyes wide once more in shock. You knew my mom? The hollow nodded once before one of her talons reached up to her mask, tugging at it roughly before ripping it from her face. The action elicited a cry from the hollow before Naruto saw a face he had only seen from the dreams of his mother's memories. Makoto? He asked in surprise, seeing her paled face staring back at him with matured Sharingan eyes. Yes that's my name. And yours is Naruto, Kishina's child. How is this possible? Why didn't you pass on? Her eyes started to tear up at that, and she shook her head in denial. I couldn't. Not when I had so much to atone for. I let my eldest child shoulder the responsibilities and guilt of our clan, while my youngest lost himself in his own darkness. I wasn't able to reach him, let him know that I was with him every night he came home since my death. Sasuke was too lost in thoughts of revenge to listen to anyone, Naruto softly explained, hoping to ease her guilt. That's just with my family that I need to atone for. There's still you that I need to make up for. Me? She nodded as her tears fell. Kashina told me about you when she was pregnant and I saw her on the day of your birth. She was my best friend, almost like a sister to me. And I allowed her child to grow up without anyone to help them, thinking that they were all alone in this miserable place. Bakodo had her hollow body take a bowing position with her head near his feet as she wept. I'm so sorry. I should have done more for you. I I could have invited you into our home, given you a family, something. But I didn't, and I can never face my best friend knowing that I've failed her. Her voice broke as she sobbed out, I'm sorry. Naruto was reeling from the confession, his gaze a mix of pity and sadness, as he looked down on her sobbing form. Lowering himself down on one knee, he reached down and had her raise her head from the ground, making her meet his gaze. Stop that, he stated firmly, his blue eyes hardening. I don't want you drowning in your guilt anymore. Yes, I grew up without any support, but I got by on my own and grew up into the man I am now. And while I appreciate you wanting to make up for things you never did, I don't want you tearing yourself apart over this. B but as she tried to say through her tears. Hey, he cut off. I forgive you for what you didn't do, Mikoto. You had your own family to worry about, so I understand. Just stop blaming yourself and thinking my mom will hate you for this. You said it yourself. The two of you were like sisters, family. I may not have had one, but one thing I do know about family is that they can forgive and move on, no matter what. He graced her with a warm smile and finished, so, I forgive you in place of my mother. Okay. Bakodo stared deep into his blue eyes that reminded her so much of his parents, and she couldn't stop her flowing tears as she chuckled, feeling an immense weight lifted from her soul. This young man before her was so much like Kishina that it would be a crime to say he was the child of someone else. Thank you, Naruto she choked out gratefully. He nodded once before he stood back up to his full height, binding threads once again reforming into a scarf. Now, why don't we sit down and talk about what happened over the years on both our ends. I'd like to know what happened to you after Itachi killed your clan. She nodded in acceptance to the offer, sitting like a cat while he sat on a piece of rubble. The first thing you need to understand, Naruto, is that Itachi didn't kill off the Ichiha on some random whim. What do you mean? He did it to prevent a coup d'etat from the Ichiha clan against a hidden leaf village. When Naruto returned to his apartment just before sunrise, his mind was full of questions and concerns from what Makoto had shared with him. 
to think that the Ichu have felt so unwelcome in the village that they are resorted to an attempt at a hostile takeover, and all because of the paranoia of the second Hokage during his reign. It only proved that bad blood could span generations, even when that blood is beneath the shade of an alliance or treaty. To make matters worse, Itachi should have been seen as a hero for his actions, though that would depend on who you ask if the truth were made public from the start. No doubt Itachi was full of remorse for his actions, forcing himself to shoulder his guilt and shame, while posing as a traitor of the village Mikoto said he loved with all his heart. It brought many questions on why he tried to convince Sasuke to embrace his hatred and hunt him down. Sure, killing Itachi would allow Sasuke some closure, but it would be one built upon a lie in Naruto's eyes. Sasuke would be unknowingly living a lie for his entire life, unable to see the truth unless someone told him. And depending on who told him, it would determine whether Sasuke returned to the hidden leaf with good or bad intentions. This only let Naruto see that Sasuke was a piece on some board he couldn't see yet, a part of some scheme that was still hidden from him. Best not to dwell on these thoughts, brat. They'll make you grow as paranoid as the Senju brat. Taking a breath to calm his raging thoughts, Naruto nodded to himself before he checked on his clone and Nell. Seeing as she was still sound asleep, he dispelled the clone before settling himself on the bed. As soon as he rested his body down, Nell scooted closer to him for his warmth and smiled in her sleep, which made him smile as well. So many questions and doubts have come up since my talk with Mikoto, I just hope that she doesn't relapse back towards her hollow instincts. Just something else you'll need to figure out for later. For now, you should rest. I can heal wounds and physical exhaustion, but mental and spiritual exhaustion are beyond me. Right thanks, Fox. His gratitude was met with silence for a few moments, making him think the Kaiubi cut off their connection. Shrugging, he settled himself to sleep before a mental nudge caught his attention. Karama. What's that? My name understand that I'm sharing this with you in confidence. You really want to show me that you're different from most humans, different from Madara and Hashirama who used us Bijuu and gave us away like tokens to prevent a war? Yes, I do. Then prove it to me. I'm entrusting you with my name, Brad. I don't want my trust to go unfounded. Slowly, a grin came to Naruto's face as he replied, you go it, Karama. A few hours of sleep were broken when Naruto felt a weight settle on his chest. Cracking an eye open, he saw Nell sitting atop him with a bright smile on her face. Morning, Rudo. She greeted excitedly. He gave a slightly tired smile. Morning how long have you been up, Nell-chan? She took a cute thinking pose with her finger on her bottom lip. Ah uh, maybe five minutes. He chuckled at that, reaching up to pat her masked head before shifting his body, so Nell got off him and he could sit up. He then started to stretch out any of the kinks he gained in his sleep. Nell had a weird dream last night, Rudo, oh? What about? Nell was bigger, she began, making him pause in his stretches. Bigger? Nodding, she continued, Nell was almost as big as Rudo, and Nell had a sword in her hands. There was this really big guy that Nell was fighting, but then Nell felt dizzy before the big guy tried to hit Nell. Then, Nell woke up. Possible repressed memories from her attack Naruto mused, seeing Nell looking a little frustrated. Nell knows there's more but Nell can't remember anything else from the dream, Rudo. Hey, don't worry so much, Nell-chan, he reassured her, rubbing the top of her head. Dreams are weird, sometimes. There are some we can remember, some we can't, and there are even some that can actually happen. Really? She asked interestedly. Yep. I had a dream a little while ago where I was a girl, he began, earning a surprised look from the girl that made him chuckle. I know, it was weird for me too. Anyway, in the dream, I was talking to another girl who was my best friend. She called me Kashina, and I called her Makoto, and we were almost like sisters. What happened? Well, the girl I was, Kashina, was about to have a baby. She was talking to Makoto about it, and the two girls both wished that their children would become friends, just like they were. And then, right when Kashina was about to have her baby woke up. Did that really happen though, Rudo? Nell asked curiously. Yes, it did. Wanna know how I know? At her nod, he smiled softly and touched his scarf. Because Kashina is my mom's nam and I was the baby that she had. Her hazel eyes widened in surprise at that before she grinned. Rudo's mom must have been a really nice lady to have Rudo for a kid. Nell bet she was really pretty, too. He chuckled at that, feeling flattered for his mother. Thanks, Nell-chan. Maybe someday I can show you what my mom looked like. But for now, let's go see Bachan. I need to ask her something. Okay. Nell agreed as she followed Naruto to the door, waiting for him to holster his sword, before jumping onto his back and climbing atop his shoulders. Onward. She cheered, getting another chuckle out the blonde Yuzumaki as he locked up his apartment and headed for the Hokage Tower. I'm glad you came back this morning, Tsunade said after greeting Naruto and Nell. The duo was seated on the couch in her office while Kubikuramj was leaning against the wall. I never got to tell you that I wanted you and Sakura to be tested by Kakashi sometime today. I told them that this afternoon would be best. That sound alright. 
works fine for me, Bachan, he replied, making her relieved that he was using the nickname again. She may despise how it teases her on her actual age, but it was also Naruto's term of endearment for her. And after their talk yesterday, she was worried he may not be on the best of terms with her, despite them agreeing to start fresh. There was something else I wanted to talk to you about, Naruto. Jiraiya has expressed his concerns about you hiding things from him, something I believe he shouldn't be so worried about. Everyone is entitled to their own personal secrets. He nodded in agreement. However, that doesn't mean that we don't worry about what those secrets could mean for you, whether they're good or bad. I'd like to know we did Jiraiya think you were fighting invisible enemies back then. Naruto sighed at that while Nell looked concerned. Can we talk about this later, Tsunade? I want to tell you, but I need to prepare myself for it, since it won't be easy for me to explain. Please understand, she saw how this was bothering him, so she offered him a gentle smile to ease his worries. Of course. Why don't we talk later this evening? Will that be enough time? He nodded once. That'll work. Just make sure your schedule is free since we'll have to leave the office. Now, her curiosity was piqued, but she said nothing more and simply nodded in agreement before dismissing him and Nell. Alone in her office, she then called out, I want you to stay out of this, Jiraiya. One of the windows opened, and the toad sage climbed inside the office before taking a seat in the chair before her desk. Why exactly shouldn't I be involved in this? He's my apprentice, I need to know what's going on with him. I won't repeat myself every time this discussion comes up. Naruto is entitled to his secrets, and all I'll be asking him about are those invisible ninja or whatever you claim to have seen him fighting. I won't betray his trust when I've gotten him to give me a fresh start. If you are so concerned, why not just ask him without making it feel like he's under interrogation? I doubt he has much trust in you now that he knows you've been spying on him. The man was silent before he asked, did you know that there was damage to the Ichiha district last night? Or that Naruto was in the same area? She frowned at him. I was made aware of the damages this morning, but not of Naruto's presence. What makes you think he'd just go and damage the place? I'm not saying he did. I'm suggesting that whatever he's hiding may be the cause of the damage. I'm also suggesting that if he keeps hiding whatever secret he has, it could bring more damage or issues to the village. You seem to have no trouble labeling Naruto as some sort of route to a larger problem, Jiraiya, Tsunade mused as a heaviness began to build inside the office. I'm just going off of the facts and what my scouts have reported to me. Well, as your Hokage, I'm ordering you to stop spying on Naruto. I won't have him questioning whether he can be trusted or not and be tempted to leave this place. He doesn't deserve that after everything he has done and lost for this village. Am I understood? You're making a mistake with this order, Lady Hokage. We'll see. Now, get the hell out of my office and out of my sight. Naruto stood beside Sakura, the duo facing their sensei as he stood casually with his hands in his pockets. He had just explained to them that the test would be exactly the same as the one they took to become Genin, the bell test. Just like before, they were instructed to come at the man with the intent to kill, saying that he wouldn't be taking it so easy on them this time around. To Naruto's disappointment, he didn't feel ready to use Kubikurumjum for this test, since he didn't have any basics in Kenjutsu, let alone practice with a blade that size. So, he stabbed it into the ground behind him, while binding threads changed into fingerless gloves. Naruto. He heard Nell cheer, turning to see that she was seated in Tsunade's lap, as the woman sat in a tree with Shizune. He also sensed Jiraiya sitting in a different tree, and he knew that the man would be paying close attention to this test. Thanks, Nell Chan. He returned cheerfully rolling his shoulders to remove any lingering kinks. You sure it was a good idea to bring her, Naruto? Sakura asked as she put on her own gloves and cracked her knuckles. She'll be fine. It's not like she'll be caught in the crossfire, he waved off as the two watched Kakashi reveal his Sharingan eye to them. Well, didn't think you were gonna be this serious, sensei. I don't want to take any chances with you two. So, shall we begin? The man replied. Training field from Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 Ost. Naruto grinned before he vanished in a burst of speed, blurring into view with a fist nearing Kakashi's face. The man saw it coming and slapped it aside before he retaliated with a spinning kick that Naruto blocked with his shin, riding out the blow to get some distance while hurling two handfuls of shuriken at the man. The Jonin whipped out a kunai and blocked the ninja stars before he rolled and leapt away from Sakura, who came in from above and struck the ground with her fist. The blow was devastating, and Tsunade smirked proudly at her student, while Nell cried out in amazement. Naruto winced at that, remembering all the punches Sakura gave him when he was younger. He shook off the memories before creating a shadow clone that quickly went through hand seals, while Naruto rushed forward. Wind style. Drilling air bullet. The clone cried, slamming its gut to expel air that solidified into a drilling force, flying over Naruto's form before curving towards Kakashi. Earth style. Mudwall. The man countered, raising up a solid slab of earth to intercept the wind attack. 
he was caught by surprise when the wall cracked dangerously from the blow, showing the level of chakra Naruto threw into the jutsu. The real Naruto leapt over the wall, a small Rasengan in hand that he covered in a shell of wind chakra. He then surprised everyone when he threw it like a ball, sending it hurtling towards the jonin with great speed. The man blurred through hand seals before sinking into the ground, just before the Rasengan impacted the earth and created a crater big enough to create an outdoor onsen. As soon as he landed, Naruto leapt up once more, barely avoiding a pair of hands that were aiming to drag him under. Sakura, the ground. He yelled, just in time for her to punch the ground with another burst of strength. The attack spread forward, breaking apart and caving in the ground, while Kakashi leapt away to avoid being crushed. The man gave a sigh of relief before he blurred through more seals and leapt onto the lake of the training field. Water style. Water dragon jutsu. He declared, having the water around him take a serpentine shape that roared before flying toward his students. Naruto formed another Rasengan, this one regular size, that he used to shield himself and Sakura from the jutsu. The spinning orb of chakra shredded away the water before Naruto unsealed a shuriken that was almost his size and launched it at Kakashi. The man was already running towards them after he launched his jutsu, and he slid beneath a large shuriken before he was forced to a substitution with a log, avoiding a powerful leg drop from the revealed clone of Naruto, who had used transformation beforehand and was sealed away. Damn. Naruto cursed, using his Riatsu to try and feel Kakashi's spiritual energy. Seeing his chakra was a blend of physical and spiritual energies, Naruto had developed his own to be able to feel out other people. Sakura, 6 o'clock. He cried, launching a salvo of shuriken with her before he flew through hand seals. Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu. The handful became dozens before multiplying again into hundreds that tore into the tree that Kakashi was hiding behind. He weaved and deflected his way out of the hailstorm of metal before blurring through hand seals again, ending with the tiger seal. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. The massive building-sized sphere of flames erupted from his mouth before barreling towards them. Naruto cursed before he gathered his riatsu, his blue eyes gaining white rings within. Sakura, get behind me. He ordered, and she complied before Naruto formed a third Rasengan. Like how he did against Makoto, he put in his riatsu, and it changed color while letting out a frosty mist. Meeting the fireball, Naruto thrust his frostbite Rasengan into the flames that quickly cooled them down, before it burst apart into a flurry of snowflakes. The Kashi's eyes widened alongside everyone else's, giving Naruto the opportunity to summon his sealing chains and burrow them into the ground. He then raced for Kakashi, making it look like he was going for a frontal assault. Kakashi's Sharingan caught a blurred image of something coming from Naruto and digging through the ground, but he met Naruto's charge regardless. His negligence for caution costed him, as the chains broke through the ground and trapped him by his ankle, as Naruto went for a clothesline laced with chakra. The force of the blow knocked all the air out of Kakashi's lungs, as it sent him flying back and crashing into a tree. Dazed and out of breath, he was caught by ninja wire that wrapped him to the tree, while Naruto appeared with a kunai to his jugular, and Sakura with another to his heart, while her other hand grabbed the bells. End music, that's the end, Kakashi-sensei, Naruto declared with a grin as his spiritual energy faded and his eyes lost their white rings. Kakashi's Sharingan caught this, however, and he made a mental note to ask Naruto about it, as well as the sudden use of ice style chakra. But, he knew that could wait in favor of giving his two students his signature eye smile, while well saying, I guess it is. Nice work, you two. You showed good teamwork and personal skill for this test and had me on my toes a few times throughout. I declare this test a pass. Naruto gave an excited shout while Nell flew into him with a hug, Ted actually knocked him over, the duo laughing on the ground, while Tsunade placed her hand on Sakura's shoulder with a proud smile. Kakashi was released from his bindings, and Shizun looked him over for any lingering wounds. Nice job, Tsunade declared. You two have really shown what these past few years have offered you. As of now, this three-man group will be known as Team Kakashi, and Naruto will be promoted to the rank of Chunin. With your talent and skill set, leaving you a genin is just foolish. Thanks, Bachan, the Yuzumaki said while holding Nell atop his shoulders. So, what exactly will Team Kakashi be used for? I'll be sending you three on higher risk missions after taking this test into consideration. However, my main goal is to have the three of you prepared to tackle the Akatsuki in case you run into them, which is highly likely considering your status, Naruto. He nodded in understanding while Sakura looked to him sadly. Hey, none of that, Sakura. It happened when I was born, and I've made my peace with it. Besides, I can always use the fox's chakra to keep my friends and home safe. Watch how you phrase such things, boy. I don't appreciate being used, right? Sorry, Karama. I know that, Naruto. It's just the pin cat tried to say, but he held up a hand to stop her. If you're going to try and apologize for anything, then don't. Whatever you think you need to be sorry for was forgiven a long time ago. Let's just focus on being the best team we can be, okay? She slowly smiled back at him and nodded. Right.
At any rate, all of you are dismissed for the day. Kakashi, after Shizune heals you up, I want a report on how you feel this test went, Tsunade ordered. Yes, ma'am, the Jonin replied, sitting still as Shizune kept healing his wounds. Sharing a look with Naruto, the Hokage left for her office. Along the way, she caught Jiraiya's eye, and the two held a silent tension before the man disappeared in a body flicker. A groan escaped her lips, and she was quickly feeling the need for a stiff drink. Late in the evening, Naruto was seen leading Tsunade away from the village and through some woodland before revealing a rundown shrine to the woman. Here we are, he announced, walking into the clearing and smiling at Mido's spirit while she looked surprised at Tsunade's presence. Tsunade didn't see Mido not that they expected her to, and looked to the damaged and moss-covered building bearing the symbol of her grandmother's clan. Why bring me here, Naruto? I wanted to show you where it all started for me, where the secret started, he answered. I never told anyone this, Tsunade. So, please try to keep an open mind about what I'm about to say. Alright, she answered, agreeing to the request. What is it you've been keeping a secret? Taking a breath, Naruto looked her dead in the eye, showing her the white rings in his azure orbs. I can see and speak with spirits and the one that taught me practically everything I know about my mother and the Uzumaki clan was the spirit of Mito Uzumaki. Tsunade's eyes widened at that and she knew then and there that this would be a long talk. Chapter 5. Trying to heal. That's impossible, Naruto, Tsunade spoke up, sitting across from Naruto on the grass beneath them. Unknown to her, Mito was standing behind him. My grandmother's been dead for many years. She should have moved on to the pure world by now. She couldn't leave, though, Naruto calmly replied, those his eyes were downcast. She felt it was her responsibility to take care of this place. He gestured to the mask storage temple in the clearing. The Yuzumaki were meant to watch over this place, guarding it from anyone who would seek to misuse the mask within. Since no other Yuzumaki knew of its existence since their defeat and near genocide, Mito sensei believed it was her duty to carry on the responsibility. But, Naruto that doesn't make any sense. It does if you have the right perspective, the blonde Yuzumaki fired back with a smile. The spirits I see are only able to be seen if someone has been around a tremendous amount of spiritual energy. My father summoned death to help seal the Kaiubi, and my infant self became exposed to the yin energy that he was giving out unconsciously. Because of that, I can see the spirits of those who have passed on, including Mito sensei Tsunade sat there quietly, taking in everything her brat had explained to her. A part of her saw the logic in his words, and the overexposure to yin energy made sense regarding seeing these spirits. Still I can't fully believe you unless you can somehow prove it. Here, she became slightly apprehensive. Is there a way you can let me see her? I think so. You're a healer, and they need intensive training in yin energy, since it's used for healing ninjutsu. Plus, I can feel the yin energy that your diamond mark is holding back, he revealed, pointing towards her forehead. I think if I expose you to enough of my riatsu, you should, theoretically, be able to see Mito sensei If not here's another method, but it's risky. Risky how? I'd rather not say unless I really need to use it. You did it to yourself, didn't you? She accused with a straight face, making him rub his head sheepishly. I still say you're an idiot for trying that Karama muttered. I'll be sure to scold you for that later, Mito added, making Naruto moan in despair. Well, let's get on with it, then, Tsunade spoke up, prompting a nod from Naruto before he got to his feet and moved behind the woman. What do you need me to do? To relax and not react. Riatsu feels different to chakra, almost airy in a sense. I don't want your chakra to fight it off since it will hinder the process. Understood, she replied, taking a breath to relax herself as Naruto placed his hands on her shoulders. At first, she felt nothing but the warmth of his palms against her clothed skin. But then, she felt something small that started to grow within her. The foreign feeling nearly made her react, but she fought down her instinctual need to expunge the foreign energy and willed her chakra to accept his riatsu. Okay, do you feel anything yet? She heard Naruto ask. Yes, and you were right on the airiness of the energy. It was a fitting description. Great. I'm going to increase the rate of my output. Try to relax and look straight ahead where Mito sensei is sitting. She fought the urge to roll her eyes, still not entirely sure he was telling the truth. But she listened to his instructions and sat calmly while looking at the space before her. The flow of his riatsu also increased, and she felt it rush through her body while a haze began to form in front of her eyes. What? Hang on, Naruto urged. More riatsu came, and the haziness started to form a shape before the space was filled with details she was once familiar with. Within moments, the space before her showed her late grandmother, though she looked transparent and had some strange chain connecting her body to the mask storage temple. Grandmother? She asked softly in shock, earning a smile from the Yuzumaki woman. My little Tsuna Mito replied warmly. Tsunade got to her feet just as Mito did, unaware of Naruto backing away to give them space. After a moment, the Hokage walked forward with misty eyes with her hand out to touch Mito's cheek. 
In her joy, she felt the cool touch of her grandmother's spiritual skin, and her tears started to roll down as she gave a weak laugh, but nowhere weak enough to dampen her joy at seeing someone she lost so long ago. Naruto watched the two women reunite with a soft smile, feeling pleased at helping someone he cared about be happy once more. Deciding to give them more space, he backed away and headed inside the temple. As soon as he entered, he saw that it was just a large singular room with a wall filled with masks. Well, no wonder the Yuzumaki wanted to keep this place protected. What do you mean? You mean you don't feel it? One of these masks reeks of death. Taking a moment, Naruto felt the restrained spiritual energy coming from one of the masks. He stepped up to the wall, staring at the face of the mask, as it seemingly looked down upon him from its position on the wall. The mask that summons death yeah, that's not a magnet for theft or misuse, he blandly noted. There's got to be a price to pay. It probably acts the same as the dead demon consuming seal, where it summons an avatar of death, and the price is your soul. So it can be used by someone without knowing the hand seals to perform the jutsu. That's honestly pretty scary, and it makes me wonder why the Yuzumaki made the mask. The mask was made by a foolish clansman from my generation, Nido spoke up from the doorway, prompting Naruto to turn around and see both her and Tsunade looking to him. But why? He wanted to pull one over on death, giving it a permanent link to the mortal plane, so that it would never be free from being summoned by mortals, she explained. As I said, he was foolish, but he was a successful fool. So, you're staying to keep the mask from being misused, Tsunade asked. Yes. I can't ask you or Naruto-kun to do so, since you both are important parts of the village. You wouldn't be able to devote your time to watching over this place. And I wouldn't trust anyone other than an Yuzumaki to watch this place. Which means I shouldn't try to assign Anbu to this place, the Hokage summarized. Probably wouldn't be the best idea, Naruto agreed. I concur. Besides, I don't mind shouldering this responsibility since it was that choice that allowed me to teach a promising young Yuzumaki, Naruto blushed bashfully, and allowed me to reunite with my beloved granddaughter, Tsunade smiled. I suppose looking for the silver linings isn't always hard, Tsunade agreed. She then turned to Naruto and continued, that girl, Nell she's related to this somehow, isn't she? He nodded once. Her spiritual energy has been damaged and twisted, resulting in her being stuck in a child's state. She's actually a fully grown adult, and I've been working on restoring her power so that she could return to her true form permanently. How can I help? Naruto-kun has been providing Nelial san with his own spiritual energy, slightly restoring the natural flow of her riatsu each time. It's a slow process, but he's been working on it. Nelial. Tsunade repeated. That's her true name, Nelial to Adershvink. Trust me when I say that she's a victim here, Tsunade. She was ambushed by one of her own people, and the ambush led to her damaged spiritual energy and her arrival here in the elemental nations. She doesn't even know if her friends and subordinates survived the ambush since they were just bait for her. And what do you plan to do after you restore her back to her true form? What else? Anything I can. I care about her, both as Nell and as Nelial. If she wants to try and return to where she came from, then I'll do whatever I can to help her get there. And if she asks you to go with her? Tsunade challenged calmly, making him pause. I, if I can come back, then I'd definitely try, he answered honestly. She smiled and shook her head at his response. I swear, you're far too good for the life a ninja, Naruto. I doubt anyone else would have answered like that unless they planned to come back for other means. But you, you would come back simply because you know that there's still people who care about you here and that there's unfinished business here in this world, Nido finished with her own smile. You seek to only do good by others, regardless of whether it will work out for you in the end or not. I just feel that, if I can help people, I should at least try. I grew up without much help, but I always cherished those that did help me. It might be selfish, but I want to be remembered by others, even if it's simply for helping them. Idiot that's not selfish Karam amused to himself, smirking as he was reminded of the one man he respected. Brat that's not a selfish desire. It just further proves my point, Tsunade spoke up while Mito nodded. Never lose that mentality, child. Most ninja are remembered for the exploits in battle or contributions to the ninja world. However, few are as well respected as those who only sought to help others. There are heroes and legends in this world, and where heroes are remembered, legends never die. Legends never die he repeated softly before grinning. I like that'll go down as a legend that never dies, Tabeo. The two women chuckled at his declaration while Karama hummed to himself. You may not know it yet, but you're on your way to that goal, kid. Back in Tsunade's office, Naruto was seated across from her as he finished explaining how Mito wasn't the only spirit he had encountered in the Hidden Leaf. Makoto's still around. Yeah. Although, she's what's referred to as a hollow, which is what happens when a spirit with regrets or some other negative feelings has the spiritual chain withered away. They are often viewed as monsters since they look like them. I mean, Makoto looked like some raven griffin hybrid thing when I fought her, but she was able to regain control over herself. What do you mean? 
Hollows are given a bad rep because they act only on their baser desire to eat other souls, all in the hope of filling up the emptiness they feel in their own souls. It's why they're called hollows, because of that emptiness. And you snap Mikoto out of her instinctive actions. I damaged her mask and revealed a part of her human face beneath. When she noticed me, she snapped out of it since I reminded her of Kachan. And those memories helped her regain her sanity, Tsunade finished. Yeah, but I'll need to check on her periodically so that she doesn't relapse, Naruto informed. But what about Nell? She has a mask too. Is she a hollow? Yes, but she's an evolved form that has grown beyond the baser instincts. She referred to herself as an Aranker and an Espada, though the second one sounded more like a position than an actual label. Kinda like how I'm a Chunin by position, but a human by race. I got it. So, you need time here and there to visit Makoto. I'd appreciate it, he replied with an apologetic smile. No, it's fine. Sensei's old advisors just came to me about holding you back from outside missions considering the Akatsuki threat and your status. She saw that he looked annoyed at that, and she gave him a sympathetic glance. I told them that you wouldn't be a fan of that and how effective you were during Kakashi's test. I can't afford to hold you back when you can be more useful on missions outside of the village. I can go out, but I may send a clone back or even leave one behind just to keep an eye on Makoto. I want her to be well enough in case I run into Sasuke. I'm sure he'd like to know that she's not completely gone. You do know that if your team brings him back, he more than likely won't be reinstated as a ninja and will be charged as a criminal, right? Yeah I figured that much during the trip with Pervy Sage. I still want to let him see her again, as well as keep my promise to Sakura. Naruto, I know that it's a stupid reason, but it's part of my nindo. I never go back on my word, and I gave Sakura my word, as a child, she cut off. Not to mention that you and the others were in an intense situation that she shouldn't have slowed down. You all couldn't have afforded to be held back like that, especially by an emotional girl too caught up in a boy to do anything. Naruto was silent at that, letting the woman vent. Look, what happened is in the past, but it doesn't change how I feel about this promise you seem so dead set on fulfilling. It's unfair to you if she keeps expecting you to adhere to it above anything else, like your own future. What if you have a family and there's a chance to capture Sasuke? Will she expect you to drop everything for that promise, knowing that there could a chance that you'll die trying? I'm not going to drop everything for my promise, Tsunade. If I get word of Sasuke, I'll only act if the chances are in my favor. If I'm already on a mission or something else is happening, it's not like I'll prioritize him over at all. I know better. The two stared at one another before Tsunade leaned back in her chair with a nod. Alright then. It's late, and I'm guessing Nell is probably wondering where you are. Nah, I left a clone with her. She's most likely asleep now. Regardless, go home and get some rest. Bring Nell to me tomorrow, and I'll see if I can do anything to help her condition. Is she aware of anything? No. She's been having dreams, but I know that they're her memories of her true self. I don't have it in me to tell her that the life she's living now isn't a true one. Tsunade saw that he looked truly troubled about that, keeping such a thing silent from the child it pertained to. You're doing what you can, Naruto. Try not to let this weigh you down. Nell is happy with you, and I'm sure that Neliel appreciates everything you're doing. Yeah but I still feel bad. I've never liked lying to anyone, and here I am doing it to someone I care about. It makes me feel like I'm also lying to myself. I know. Trust me, I've been where you are now, trying to keep a lie from someone I love because I believed it would keep them safe. Sometimes, it's the right thing to do, even if we feel horrible going through it. Just keep pushing on, okay? He nodded and gave her a thankful smile before excusing himself, heading home for the night. Why are we here, Rudo? Nell asked, sitting on the blonde Yuzumaki's lap in a hospital room. Achan is a doctor, and she wanted to take a closer look at the crack you have in your mask, Naruto answered. She wants to see if she can do anything to fix it. It can be fixed. That's what we're going to try and find out. Oh. She was silent after that, kicking her legs in boredom as the duo waited the sanin. Nell had another dream, Ruto. She was big again in that dream, but she had four legs instead of two. Four legs. He repeated in interest. Did you have a tail too? Yeah. It was full of hairs, and Nell's lower body was big. Someone could have sat on Nell's back. Did you have toes? She shook her head with a negative hum. MMMN. Nell's feet were hard and dark. Many ideas, Karama. Sounds equine in look, he answered before he caught Naruto's confusion. Horse-like, oh why didn't you just say that? The fox grumbled incoherently before going silent. Sounds like you had horse legs or something, Naruto informed Nell. Horse. She repeated in confusion. Instead of answering verbally, Naruto made a clone and had it transform into a small horse so that it wouldn't damage anything. Like that. Nell looked at the legs and body before nodding in agreement. Yeah, Nell's legs and lower body looked like that. So, some sort of centaur looking thing man, I'm so glad I read all those fantasy and mythological books when I was a kid. 
The clone disappeared just in time for Tsune to open the door and step inside with Shizun. Sorry for the wait. I was speaking with the other doctors about priorities today. No worries, Naruto waved off, lifting up Nell and setting her on the examination bed. Okay Nell, I want you to stay calm and let Bachan take a look at you. I'll be here with you the whole time, okay? She nodded once, and the blonde stepped back to give the two Medikinoichi some room. It felt like hours had passed to him as they looked over her mask, the crack it had, and the energy it was giving off. He was proud to see Nell staying calm through it all, nothing like how he would have been acting given his history with hospitals. He chuckled quietly at the memory of Tsunade, trying to give him some immunization shots. He'd admit that he was a terror that day. After they were finished, Tsunade had Shizun take their findings for further inspection with other medics, while she stayed behind with Naruto and Nell. Well, the good news is that I believe I can try to fix her crack, but... Naruto pressed. But I want to try and study our findings first before I try anything. If I just acted without looking over our data, I could actually make the crack worse. Something like this needs to be handled carefully. He nodded in understanding. So, what should we do until? A messenger tune in rushing by stopped him, for the man looked almost panicked. Lady Hokage. Urgent message from the hidden sand. The sand. Both blondes repeated in surprise before the Hokage took the scroll and opened it, speed reading through the message. Damn it, I thought Yureya told me that they wouldn't act for at least three years. What happened? Naruto asked in concern. Ara, the Kazakiage, has been defeated and abducted by the Akatsuki, and his brother, Kankuro, is in critical condition by means of poison. Ara, we have to go help him. And you will, she assured before calling out one of her anbu. Fetch Kakashi and Sakura and tell them to meet me in my office for an urgent air rank mission. Right away. The anbu replied before they faded away. Naruto, she continued, I'll keep an eye on Nell while you're away on this mission, but leave a clone to handle your other assignment. He nodded and had a clone form right next to him, before it took off for the Ichiha compound. Nell, I want you to stay close to Bachan while I'm gone. Okay. Wait. Why is Ruto going? She asked worriedly. Because I have to go and help Gara. He was taken by some bad people, and I'm going to go and get him back. Nell wants to go too. I want to take you, but I can't this is really important, and I don't want you to be in danger while I try to fight these bad guys. She pouted and crossed her arms. Nell wants to go too. Nell want to help Ruto save Sandy. Ruto told me that friends help others, no matter what. He winced. That's true, but Ruto also said that family does the same thing for family, and Ruto is Nell's family. So, Nell will help Ruto. She declared with finality, complete with a firm nod. He was touched that she referred to him as family and at how she took his teachings to heart. Nell I'm just worried about you and Nell is gonna worry about Ruto. She fired back. If Ruto leaves Nell, Nell will chase after Ruto and hit him for leaving Nell. He sweat dropped at that while Tsunade fraught a chuckle. She saw him turn to her for help, and she smirked. She's made her decision. Besides, if anything else, you could always have her help. Yeah. Nell will be a big help. The little rancor assured him, giving the whiskered blonde a pleading face. Naruto sighed in defeat at that. Fine, but you stay with me at all times until I say otherwise. Got it. Yes. Nell will stay super close to Ruto. Nell promises. He sighed again, but this time with a faint smile as he rubbed the top of her head. What am I gonna do with you? Tsunade smiled at the moment, finding their interactions to be perfectly equivalent to a worried older brother and a stubborn yet determined younger sister. Makes me wonder how it changes when she's an adult she mused, honestly curious about how Naruto's behavior changes when Nell becomes Nelial. Naruto, I'll take Nell to my office and have you meet us all there. Gather your gear. He nodded and gave Nell's head one last pat before he vanished in a burst of smoke. When he rejoined them, it was in Tsunade's office with Kakashi and Sakura already there and ready to go. I'll be brief since this is a timely concern. Gara was taken by Akatsuki and Kankuro is in critical condition due to a poison made by Sasori of the Red Sands. His accomplice is a blonde ninja with a slashed hidden stone headband and an expert in explosives. We don't have much else information on him, except that his explosives take the shape of clay animals that can move freely before detonating on his command. Your mission, Team Kakashi, is to assist in restoring Kankuro's health while also pursuing the Akatsuki and retrieving the Kazakiage. Yes, ma'am, Team Kakashi replied, with Nell standing beside Naruto and giving an adorable salute before she jumped onto Naruto's back, clinging to his shoulder. Sakura noticed this and asked, she's not really coming with is she? I'm allowing it. There's more to Nell than you and Kakashi know, and I'm leaving it up to Naruto to explain if he wants. Don't push him into answering if he doesn't want to. Nell will be his responsibility. But. Understood, Lady Hokage, Kakashi cut off, giving Sakura a side glance with his visible eye. We leave immediately. Try to inform Tamari if you spot her. She left for the hidden sand this morning, so she more than likely doesn't know what's happened. 
inform her and escort her back home. The ninja nodded before they, plus their tag along, left for the main gates. They didn't stop when they reached them, blazing past the gates and rushing through the trees towards the direction of the hidden sand. Naruto's blue eyes hardened as he leapt across the branches, white rings forming in their azure depths as he clenched his fist. Akatsuki, we knew this was going to happen eventually. We'll be ready for them when the time comes, Kurama assured him. Yeah hang on, Gara, We're coming for you. Unknown to him, his unconscious gathering of Riatsu started to leak into Nell, and her hazel orbs gained a similar white ring to his own, as she clung to his back. What if Naruto has hollow beast harem and bleach? Thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.